Hello. Welcome to the Fanfic Majesty. 9 p.m. I am. Chapter 161 Chapter 157. Previous Chapter. Next Chapter. Advertisement. It might kill you too. Maya Hansen said, staring at the crazy Tony. Tony. Stark was crazy and thought of injecting extremists to save his life. Even she can only guarantee extremist success rate at 1%. In other words, 100 experimenters who inject extremists will survive at most. Tony. Are you sure? I'm going to inject you with extremists. Maya said. Definitely. Tony. Stark nodded solemnly. Dot 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 dot. A day later, Maya Hansen opened the door of the medical room, and she had been in the medical room for 24 hours to check various data for Tony. I have to say, Tony was lucky, and he carried it off. As Tony okay, Little Pepper, who had also been guarding for 24 hours outside, hurriedly got up and asked. This hospital didn't explode, he should be fine. Maya Hansen said, and Pepper rushed into the medical room. On the operating table, there is a man wrapped in a scorched hard shell, Tony. Stark. Maya checked by the machine, and she said, Tony should be fine, all the data is normal, but I don't know why he hasn't woke up yet. As soon as Maya Hansen's voice fell, Tony Stark's chest on the operating table shot a ray of light, and the charred hard shells fell to the ground one after another, and Tony sat naked on the operating table. Tony, are you okay? Little Pepper wept with joy. It's okay, it's never been better. As Tony said, some dark golden metallic liquid oozes out of Tony's skin and covers Tony's body. What is this? Little Pepper looked at Tony in astonishment. Don't be afraid. Tony smiled, and the metallic liquid began to solidify, becoming a dark golden protective film covering Tony's body. This is amazing. Maya Hansen tutted in surprise. Advertisement. Tony, what did you do? Little Chili asked curiously. This metal protective film was originally worn on my body. Now it has been modified by extremists and stored in the gaps between my bones. Now I have Iron Man in my body. Tony said ecstatically. Now, the steel battle suit is directly connected to my brain, and I can now control the steel battle suit with my thoughts, just like having another hand. Before I needed to use the microchip in my arm to control the steel battle suit, the reaction speed was too slow, now. I only need a thought to control the steel battle suit. As soon as Tony's voice fell, the Mark 42 armor that had been dismantled on the side flew to Tony quickly and accurately, and merged with Tony. I am now Iron Man from the inside out. Outside, there is a steel battle suit. Inside, there is a protective suit. And I was originally modified by extremists, I am now omnipotent. Dot 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 dot. After solving the Killian extremist incident, Tony also had time to rebuild his villa. During this time, he and Pepper continued to live on Livy's island. Because the scenery here is pretty good. Wong Zan, ha ha, I won. A hearty laughter sounded, and Tony Stark danced in front of Li Wei and Eddie. After solving Killian's threat, this guy was in a very good mood, winning several times in a row. It seems that mood can indeed affect luck. This is unscientific. Li Wei is about to start serious. His title of King of Landlords cannot be taken away by a foreigner. However, Li Wei's next plan was interrupted by a phone call. Doctor Strange came to him for something and gave him an address. Dot 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 dot. New York City, 177A Blick Street, this is the residence of Doctor Strange. Advertisement. Li Wei looked at the address on the phone, it should be right here. At this moment, there are five people standing or standing in the hall of this house. Several of them know Li Wei. The one who is most familiar with is his old friend Dr. Strange. The one who talked with Dr. Strange happily is Professor X, the most powerful spiritual ability in the world. Next to the bookshelf, a man wearing only shorts stood with his hand in his hand. Li Wei also knew him, and had several experiences with him. King of Atlantis, Namo, King of the Seven Seas. Next to Namor, a middle-aged man who tweeted surprises from time to time, Li Wei, was more familiar with the Fantastic Four's Mr. Fantastic, the guy with the highest IQ on Earth who was interested in everything in Doctor Strange's house. In the end, a guy in a black tight stood silently in the room, like a statue. Well, the last one is here. As soon as Doctor Strange's voice fell, a knock on the door sounded. Doctor, I'm not late. Li Wei followed Stephen into the room and came here. He didn't know what medicine was sold in Doctor Strange's gourd. No, it's just that they arrived early. Stephen said. They, Li Wei looked at Stephen. The other four. Not bad. Stephen nodded, and he took Li Wei to the living room on the second floor. Sure enough, there were four visitors in it. The other three Li Wei are familiar with them, Professor X, Mr. Fantastic, and Namor. The last guy was wearing a black tights and a headgear attached to the tights on his head. There were two crossed antennas on the headgear. 
Li Wei has never seen this guy, but he knows who this guy is, the king of Adelan, the leader of the alien race, the king of black bats. The people who can stand in this hall are not simple, they can be said to be one of the most powerful people on the planet. Mr. Fantastic, the strongest wisdom on earth. Advertisement. Professor X, the most powerful spiritual ability on earth. Namor, king of Atlantis, king of the seven seas. Doctor Strange, the future sorcerer supreme. Li Wei, the strongest force self-appointed. As for the Black Bat King to be able to stand in this hall with five people, he is naturally not easy. Even said that this guy is extremely scary. The Black Bat King can be said to be one of the strongest superhero on Earth. His ability is to release pseudo-sonic waves, which is a power that destroys the world. With a whisper, he has the power of nuclear bomb destruction, and it is easy to destroy a city. When he wants to speak, it means that someone is going to suffer, so he is jokingly called, the strongest gun on the surface. Therefore, on most occasions, he will remain silent. Subsequently, the six people got to know each other, and after a brief conversation, they basically determined the future position of the Illuminati. It is very simple, it is to prevent future threats, to resist the crises of the destruction level of the Earth and even the crises of the galaxy level. The most powerful secret organization on Earth was born today. Everyone, starting today, the six of us will work together in secret. Finally, Doctor Strange ended the conversation. The five people also left. After Li Wei talked with Professor X for a while, he was also going to leave, but Doctor Strange stopped him. Dot dot dot. Chapter 162 Chapter 158 Nine Kingdoms. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. What's the matter? Doctor. Li Wei looked at Stephen Strange. Li, there is a mysterious incident in a small country in Europe. I am going to go there. Are you going? Stephen asked. Mystery incident. Go. Definitely go. Li Wei nodded. Now it's boring anyway. As Stephen Strange opened the portal, he and Levy crossed from New York City to Europe. This is a small European country, Norway, a small town called Slok. I noticed abnormal magical fluctuations here a few days ago, but I didn't expect it to be more serious now. With that, Stephen and Levy left. Entering the small town, the streets of this small town are crowded and lively. Look, Stephen pointed to the sky. Over the town, you could see some mysterious buildings appearing, like movie special effects. Many tourists in the small town came here to take pictures and discuss them. A mirage? Li Wei asked. No, it's not that simple. Stephen said, if it's not wrong, it should be related to something that is going to happen recently. What's the matter? Li Wei took out an apple and took a bite. Do you know the nine countries? Stephen asked. Is it the same nine worlds as Asgard? Yes, in myths and legends, the world tree supports nine kingdoms on three levels, Asgard, the kingdom of the gods of the Aesir, Alfheim, the kingdom of elves, Jotunheim, the giants of Jotunheim, Helheim, the land of eternal knights, and Watar C, the dwarf. M, and the Midgard world we are in. The people of God's domain call this Midgard. The nine kingdoms are connected to each other, but they do not affect each other. But the universe will cycle every 5,000 years, and each cycle will line up the nine worlds. At this time, the doors of the nine worlds are opened, and the nine kingdoms can shuttle between each other. Whether it is gravity, light, or even matter, they can enter another world from another world. Such a situation is rarely felt, and few people see it. Advertisement. But it happened. In the near future, the nine worlds will be joined together. I have seen from the future that there will be a powerful evil force coming. You mean the sky above this small town is connected to this other world? Li Wei asked. Yes, the two worlds have begun to overlap. The building above the town is not a mirage, but another world, but the barrier between the two worlds has not been completely opened. What if the barrier between the two worlds is opened? Then these two worlds will be connected. We can go in and they can come out. If this happens, it will definitely be a disaster. The power of the nine kingdoms is not something our human world can resist. Instead of passively observing, it is better if we go in and take a look. Li Wei suggested that he actually wanted to go in and take a look. Stephen pondered for a while, he was thinking about the risks, and finally nodded, okay, then we'll go in and take a look. After speaking, Stephen Strange flew to the mirage in the sky, and Li Wei followed him closely. Although the barrier between the two worlds has not been completely opened, it is already very thin. With Doctor Strange's magical ability, it is easy to open a gap in the barrier between the two worlds. Let's go. Let's go to other worlds to see. As they said, Stephen and Levy entered the portal and disappeared into the sky, immediately causing the tourists below to roar. Dot 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 dot. UK. London. At the same time, in an abandoned factory on the outskirts of London, Jane Foster, her assistant Daisy Lewis, and Daisy's interns came here. Please, aren't you excited? 
This is a rare gravity anomaly. Daisy pushed the car door and walked out. Even the interns are more excited than you. My name is Ian. The tall and thin intern introduced himself. The three of them walked into the abandoned factory, and suddenly, there was a sound of footsteps, which shocked the three of them. Advertisement. I don't want to be stabbed to death for doing scientific research. Daisy raised her hands and said to the empty factory, We have no malice, we are Americans. At this time, several children walked out from the corner. All kids. Jane breathed a sigh of relief. Are you the police? A little girl said. No, we are scientists. Jane said, We just discovered the anomaly here. I think you should have discovered it too. Can we see it? Jane said to the children. The children looked at each other and said to the three of Jian, Follow us. A few children led Jane through the abandoned factory, and after bypassing a few corridors, they came to a workshop. A big truck was parked in the workshop, and a little boy walked over. Under the gaze of the three of Jane, the little boy lifted the big truck with only one finger. How could this be? Daisy asked in astonishment. Come with us. The children led the three of them to a circular aisle. The little boy walked to the upper stairs of the three of Jane and threw a bottle down. When the bottle fell below, the bottle disappeared out of thin air. Where did you go? Daisy asked in surprise. The little girl next to her pointed to it. Then, the bottle fell from the top disappeared when it fell in front of them, and then appeared from above, in a cycle like this. Unbelievable. Jane said in surprise. She found a can from behind and threw it down. Several people looked up, but the can did not fall down for a long time. What's the matter? Jane asked. Advertisement. Sometimes things come out, sometimes they don't, said the little girl next to her. Jane took the instrument next to her in her hand. The signal displayed on it was familiar to her. Every time Thor came to meet her on the earth, the instrument would display such data. Jane walked up alone. She walked in the abandoned corridor. The data displayed on the instrument became stronger and stronger. Jane Foster followed the instrument signal when a strong wind came from behind him. That is, at the moment, the instrument reaches the strongest moment. Immediately, a violent wind came behind him, drawing Jane towards the wall. Just as Jane Foster was about to collide with the wall, there was a twisting wave on the wall, and she went straight through. Jane surprised Roar, and then what was printed in her eyes was a dark space with dim light. She looked to the side and saw a square stone pillar. In the gap between the stone pillars, there was a scarlet light shining. Jane Foster leaned close to the gap and could see that there was a dark red liquid flowing in the gap. What is this? Jane Foster is curious. At this moment, the dark red liquid suddenly rushed towards her. Ah! Jane Foster screamed Roar. She backed back again and again. At this moment, the dark red liquid in the stone pillars disappeared, and the stone pillars were joined together, and there was no gap. Dot dot dot. Chapter 163 Chapter 159. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Mysterious dark space. Jane Foster patted her arm, she clearly saw the dark red liquid entangled her arm first, and then disappeared instantly. Suddenly, Jane Foster's eyes went dark, and she fell to the ground and fainted. At the same time, somewhere in the dark universe. The light here is dim, and there seems to be some powerful force, even the light is swallowed. In this space where meteorites are floating, there is a sword-shaped spaceship floating. Inside the spaceship, a guy with a pale face without a trace of blood woke up from the sleeping cabin. He was the leader of the Dark Elves Malekis. Malekis walked on the spaceship, the sleeping cabins next to it opened one by one, and countless Dark Elves walked out. Ether wakes us up, and the gathering begins. Malekis looked up at the sky. Although it was the top of the spacecraft that was in front of his eyes, his gaze seemed to penetrate the distance of the universe and saw something. Dot 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 dot. Clang clang clang. The sound of metal collision. Ah. Li Wei and Stephen entered into a battlefield, which was a plain surrounded by virgin forests. In this plain, a fierce battle is taking place. The two sides of the battle are a tall orc, a human warrior in golden armor, and a short dwarf. Roar. At this time, a grey orc about five or six meters high appeared behind Li Wei and Stephen, and roared at them, smashing the huge amounts of mace in his hand. Advertisement. Boom. The two quickly dodged, and huge amounts of mace hit the ground, suddenly the rubble splashed, and the tall orc continued to attack Li Wei. Boom. A harsh tearing air sounds came, and Li Wei raised his fist. The next moment, the orc's body burst open, and flesh and blood splashed to the ground. What's this place? Li Wei flew to Stephen. I don't know that world, it looks like a war is going on here. Crack. Before Stephen's words fell, a thunder and lightning struck down in the sky, and immediately countless orcs were knocked to the ground. It's Thor, that guy is still so exaggerated. Li Wei could see who it was at a glance. Thor's hammer swung, 
with lightning sparks, knocking out an orc five or six meters high for several tens of meters, and his body was completely scorched. Ho 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 ho. The roar sounded, and countless orcs rushed towards Thor. Thor shook the hammer of Mernir, and the orcs were knocked to the ground. But there were too many orcs, and they came in densely, drowning him in an instant. Thor raised the hammer, lightning bolts in the sky, and thunder bursts from the hammer, blasting all the orcs out. Bang! At this moment, a strong orc measuring five or six meters came to Thor, hit Thor with a punch, and threw Thor flying out, and the hammer, Minel, came out. Ho ho ho! Suddenly, a roar sounded, and the dense orcs drowned Thor. Boom! At this time, a loud sound rang out, and a fierce wind pressure swept across, blasting all the orcs out, and even Thor was thrown out. Thor waved his hand, and the hammer miller returned to his hand, and he flew to the ground. This force is so familiar. It's like a friend of the earth, but he can't be here. Hey, Thor, every time I see you, it's nothing good. At this moment, a familiar voice sounded behind Thor. Advertisement. Thor turned around in surprise, who is not Li Wei? Li, why are you here? Thor was surprised. This is Wat Alheim, the world of dwarfs, not closer to the earth than Asgard, the realm of gods. Doctor Strange and I were investigating a mysterious incident on the earth, and we ended up here, Li Wei said. Roar. At this moment, a burly orc appeared in front of the three of them, lifting a stone stick and smashing it down at the three of them. Boom. The next moment, the burly orc body burst open, and flesh and blood splashed to the ground. Excuse our conversation. Li Wei retracted his fist. What about you? Why did you people from God's domain come here to fight? Li Wei asked. It's not caused by Loki. Because of this guy, the order in the Nine Realms is in chaos, and we are quelling the chaos in the Nine Realms. Warnerheim, Jotunheim, and now there is still Alfheim's elven country. Thor just finished speaking, and countless orcs rushed towards the three of them. Thor raised the hammer, lightning struck out, and countless orcs wailed and fell. After half an hour of fighting, Asgard's army and dwarf finally defeated all these orcs. Stephen Strange has returned to Earth, while Levy stayed. Unfortunately, in half an hour, he did not find a decent opponent. Beside Li Wei, there are many dwarf. These guys are short in stature, but very strong wearing heavy armor, and looking very burly. Ho 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 ho. Suddenly, there were bursts of deafening roars. On the plane ahead, a black line appeared. As the black line approached, everyone could see clearly that it was a dense army of orcs. At the front of the orc army, there are some tall orcs about five or six meters in height, followed by a dense army of orcs. Behind the orc army are some huge monsters. Advertisement. Especially among a group of monsters, there is a monster that is as big as a hill. As the monster moves, the ground is shaking. That's an army of orcs. The speaking dwarf was trembling in his voice. In the face of this overwhelming wave of orcs, in addition to Thor, a guy who is not afraid of fighting, and Li Wei, a monster who is frantically looking for opponents, the soldiers of Asgard and the dwarf of God's domain are all shocked by this terrible scene. These guys are crazy, Thor said. That's the king of orcs. Next to Thor and Levi was King Dwarf, who pointed to the monster with a huge body. King of the orcs, King Sonata. Although the distance is far away, with Li Wei's eyesight, he can easily see that there is an orc about 10 meters high on the monster with a huge body. What should I do? I don't think we are the opponents of the orc army. Once they pass, we are trampled down. Bostag, one of the three warriors of God's domain, stepped forward and said. Then fight until the last soldier and drain the last drop of blood. King Dwarf raised his axe and roared, and the dwarf soldiers behind him roared deafeningly. Don't be so troublesome. Li Wei came out and said let me perform the beheading operation. As long as the orc king dies, I believe these orcs will retreat and there will be no casualties. Li Wei walked forward. Li, are you sure you can? Thor stepped forward and said. Let me go with you. Dot dot dot. Chapter 164 Chapter 160. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. No, so many orcs, you will not have any impact if you go. Li Wei walked towards the orcs wave alone, leaving Thor, who was messy in the wind. This was the first time someone told him that he could not help in the battle. But he couldn't refute it, watching the dense wave of orcs seemed to be the case. Who is he? He seems to be a powerful warrior. King Dwarf next to Thor asked, fighting side by side for half an hour. He had seen Li Wei's power. The orc who died in the hands of this bald head is no better than the one under his axe. Few souls. He is the most powerful hero on earth. If there is anyone here who can end this disaster, then it is him. As Thor said, Li Wei's figure stood in front of the overwhelming wave of orcs like a grain of dust. Ho 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 ho. The roar of the orcs resounded through the sky, and they moved towards Li Wei in a dense crowd. Go on. Li Wei said, 
and he took a step forward. Boom. The ground cracked, and Li Wei turned into a golden lightning and rushed towards the orc wave. Boom. Li Wei blasted a punch, and the violent wind rushed through the wave of orcs, and the densely packed orcs suddenly turned into flesh and blood to splash on the ground. Ho 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 ho. There was a roar, and countless orcs about five or six meters high appeared in front of Li Wei, smashing huge amounts of mace at him. Li Wei's toe was on the ground, and the whole person leapt up, blasting the head of the orc with a punch, and then he hit the orc's shoulder a little, and the whole person rushed towards the huge monster behind the orc wave. At this moment, a black shadow attacked Li Wei, and he turned over in the air, avoiding the black shadow's attack. This black shadow was a huge amount of orc, and the mace in its hand was smashed at Li Wei. Boom. With a loud noise, countless orcs were smashed into flesh by mace. And Li Wei's figure disappeared. Advertisement. A golden light of lightning rushed up, and Li Wei suspended in front of the tall orc. The orc grabbed Li Wei, and he threw out a punch. Boom. The orc's arm exploded, and the violent wind bombarded the orc's chest. The orc's body instantly exploded, and the flesh and blood splashed to the ground. Li Weifei fell into the wave of orcs, and as he rushed, the orcs who approached him were thrown off one after another. The Asgard and Dwarf in the distance saw Li Wei rushing into the orc army like this, and they couldn't help but sweat for him. How courage does this guy need to be to rush into the orc army alone? Even if these orcs stand and kill him, it is estimated that they can't be killed for a few days or nights. This guy can fly, it shouldn't be a problem to retreat if he can't win. Although Thor said so, he didn't know what to do. He knows that Li Wei is very powerful, but can he win against so many orcs? Maybe it can, maybe it can't. On the other side, Li Wei is engaged in a frantic battle. Although these orcs didn't fight, they also made him interested. With a burst of sound, Li Wei leapt towards the distance, blasted out a punch, and a patch of orcs suddenly turned into a patch of blood. The flying body landed on the ground, Li Wei clapped his hands together, the violent wind rushed out, and suddenly a swarm of orcs was lifted into the air. He alone is an army. Boom, at this moment, the orc army separated from the middle, and huge monsters burst towards Li Wei. The ground began to vibrate violently, and Li Wei flew up, that is, the moment he flew up, the ground exploded and a monster of huge amounts of drilled out of the ground. It was like a centipede magnified thousands of times, with blood stains on the fangs in the mouth of the blood basin. As soon as this centipede monster appeared, he opened his mouth to Li Wei in the air, trying to swallow Li Wei in one bite. Li Wei raised his fist and bombarded the monster. Advertisement. Boom. The fist rubbed against the air and there were tearing air sounds. The next moment, the monster's huge body exploded directly, turning into a pile of blood and splashing in the air. Li Wei kicked his legs on the ground, and with a, bang, the ground burst, and he turned into a golden flash of light and rushed towards the orc king behind the orc army. On a hill-like monster, the orc king stood tall, and it roared when he looked at Li Wei who was rushing over. With this roar, countless orcs rushed toward Li Wei desperately. Even if Li Wei was flying in the air, these orcs on the ground still crowded in crazily, and soon these orcs piled up to form a hill. It's crazy. Li Wei ignored these crazy orcs and flew forward. Soon, he came to the front of this hill-like monster. On the monster, there is an orc about 10 meters high. This should be the orc king called by the king of dwarf. Li Wei leapt towards the orc king, and the orc guards on the monster rushed towards Li Wei. These orc guards are about 5 or 6 meters tall, very strong and sturdy. Unlike other orcs, these orcs wear heavy armor and hold some simple weapons. Roar. With a roar, an orc rushed to Li Wei. The next moment, the orc exploded and turned into flesh and blood to splash on the ground. As Li Wei advanced, one orc guard fell under his fist. He blazed a trail of blood, and one life disappeared. Li Wei came to the front of the Orc King and looked at the Orc King, who was about 10 meters high. Thor and his party in the distance naturally discovered that Li Wei had attacked the Orc King's mount. Li succeeded. He killed the Orc King's mount. Everyone was excited. Now, the battle between Li Wei and the Orc King will determine the fate of this world. If Li Wei loses, then the world will be destroyed by the Orc King. Thor, they can only return to Asgard with shame. The Orc King mounts, and Li Wei's cloak rises in the wind. Advertisement. He and the Orc King looked at each other, this guy should be very strong, Li Wei could feel it. The strong muscles were like rock and steel, and the fierce eyes seemed to tear him apart. Suddenly, the Orc King took the lead to attack. Its weapon, an axe with huge amounts of it, slashed at Li Wei fiercely. The figure shook, and Li Wei disappeared. When it appeared again, Li Wei appeared in front of the Orc King's head. The eye pupils of the Orc King shrank violently. Although it saw Li Wei's attack, its body did not have time to react at all. Li Wei blasted out with a punch and slammed it on the head of the Orc King. 
The sound of broken bones sounded, the orc king's face was distorted, his eyes were congested, and the whole person rushed out behind him like a cannonball. Boom. After the orc king flew hundreds of meters in the air, he hit the ground fiercely, and then hit the ground for hundreds of meters before stopping. In the deep pit, the orc king crawled out embarrassedly, his head full of red blood. A golden light flashed in the distance, and Li Wei rushed over and came to the orc king in an instant. Roar. The orc king roared angrily, his pupils were bloodshot, and the axe slashed at Li Wei. Dang Kang. Mars splashes. Li Wei stretched out his hand to block the orc king's axe. He pinched the axe with one hand. With a click, the orc king's axe shattered. The eye pupils of the orc king shrank violently, which was an incredible light. Dot dot dot. Chapter 165 Chapter 161 The Search for the Goddess Eden Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement Roar The Orc King roared, his pupils filled with rage's light, and his fist struck Li Wei fiercely. Li Wei reacted quickly, crossing his hands in front of him. Boom! The fist of the Orc King slammed Li Wei's arm like a huge hammer, and a terrifying force struck from his arm. Li Wei felt a shock in his chest, and the whole person rushed out behind him. Boom boom boom! Where Li Wei flew past, the ground burst one after another. Li Wei's toe was a little on the ground, tumbling in the air, and flying back several tens of meters on the ground before buffering this terrifying force. Interesting. Li Wei stood up straight. At this moment, the Orc King descended from the sky and came to Li Wei. Li Wei raised his head and looked at the Orc King, his cloak raised behind him. Roar. The Orc King roared, the muscles on his arms swelled instantly, and his fists bombarded Li Wei with piercing tearing air sounds. Boom. Li Wei blocked the Orc King's attack with one hand, and the ground exploded. With him as the center, the ground cracked within a hundred meters. On this level, Li Wei looked at the Orc King. The Orc King rage, with bloodshot eyes in his eyes, let out a deafening roar, and his fist bombarded again. Li Wei also punched, and the two fists collided in the air. The next moment, the Orc King's arm burst open, and blood splashed all over it. Boom. The fierce fist wind bombarded the Orc, with a, click, the Orc King's chest sank severely, and the whole person flew backwards like a broken kite. Li Wei's toes were a little on the ground, and the whole person rushed towards the Orc King. Advertisement. At this moment, the upper body of the Orc King was stained red with blood, one of his arms was broken, and his chest was sunken. Even so, the Orc King was extremely cruel, its pupils were red, and it roared, and the other arm fisted towards Li Wei. Boom. The next moment, the Orc King's fist burst open, and its head instantly turned into a pool of blood. Circled dot operator for all circled dot operator. It seems that the expectations of you are too high. Li Wei retracted his fist, turned and flew away, and flew towards the plane where Thor and the others were. Li, are you okay? In the plane, Thor and the crowd asked nervously. Obviously, they were not worried about Li Wei, but the situation of the Orc King. As the Orc King dead, King Dwarf has a big beard, he is more impatient, and his voice is as loud as thunder. Dead. Li Wei's voice fell and a roar came from his body, but it was not from their camp, but from the orc army in the distance. The dense orc army retreated chaotically like headless flies, and quickly disappeared on the plain. Oh, suddenly, a roar of joy broke out in the plain. Human warrior, King Sage of Dwarf pays tribute to you, you saved us. Follow us to the wall city, today we have to have a good drink. King Dwarf bowed to Li Wei with his arm on his chest. In the world of Walter Alheim, my favorite is your spirits. Thor came to be interested. Dot 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 dot. Alfheim, the country of elves. Fighting the elves was a monster called the Burner. Thor led the army of God's domain to kill him, and it didn't take long to beat the Burner back. The elves here are very beautiful. They take care of flowers and plants and love nature very much, just like the elves in various myths and legends. Li Wei stared at the beautiful elf on the seat next to him, his ears were long and pointed, and his body exuded a fresh and natural smell. Advertisement. The clothes that the elven girl wears are very simple, it is a grass cluster made of plants, and there is only a simple plant wrapped chest on the chest. The figure is slender, and the other female elves are similar. The male elves are even simpler, wearing only a grass skirt. Li, you're very rude, Thor reminded him. Li Wei reacted, he wanted to explain, but the beautiful elf next to him spoke. It's okay, I can feel that you don't have a trace of blasphemy in your heart. It's very peaceful, just like our elves. The elf girl said, her eyes were shining, and it seemed that there were stars hidden inside, and humans are completely different. We offer a glass to the warriors of Asgard. At this moment, sitting on the forest throne formed by the bending and weaving of plants in front, the elf queen stood up, and she raised the wine glass in her hand. Unlike ordinary elves, the elves queen wears gorgeous robes and exudes a noble aura. 
Unlike ordinary elves, which are natural and fresh from the inside out, the elves' queen is more like a ruler. Everyone raised their glasses, and the elf queen continued, We respect the great Thor, the great human hero Libby, and your deeds will extol the Nine Kingdoms. Everyone drank it. The elf queen is right, their deeds are destined to celebrate the Nine Kingdoms. Because in the world of Walter Alheim and Dwarf, when Levi and the army of God's domain left, those dwarf who were very strangers cast a gold statue about ten meters high for Levi and Thor. In the setting sun, the human hero Levi and Thor cross each other's shoulders. Thor raises the hammer of Merneil, and the human hero Levi raises his fist. Don't mention the shame in that posture. No, it's so handsome. After Alfheim celebrated the turn, Levi returned to Asgard with Thor. The war in the Nine Realms has subsided, and the brave soldiers should be rewarded. There should also be a banquet that belongs to them. Advertisement. At the banquet, Li Wei once again met the goddess Eden who guards the golden apple. Dot 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 dot. Eden wore a spotless white dress. Although simple, it made people unable to ignore her brilliance. From the moment she walked into the banquet, many eyes were on her. Eden walked through the banquet, her gaze swept across the celebrating soldiers, making countless fighters excited, but soon her gaze moved away. Finally, Eden found the person she was looking for, a bald head who laughed in the crowd. In front of Li Wei, Bostag, one of the three warriors of God's domain, hugged a large wooden barrel and poured wine into the mouth, drew a burst of joy and roar applauded. I'm finished, ha ha ha. Bostag's laughter stopped abruptly, because he saw Li Wei looking at him with a smile, and all the wine in the barrel had been drunk. Awesome. Bostag just finished speaking, he leaned back and fell to the ground with a, bang. At this time, Li Wei found Eden behind him. Hey, Eden. Li Wei reached out and greeted Roar. He had just drunk a large bucket of wine and his expression remained the same. Hey, Li. Eden was not good at words. When Li Wei came to Asgard with the army of the Nine Realms, she suddenly felt like she wanted to see him. This feeling is very strange. For a long time, only the golden apple she guarded made her feel this way. Then she came, but she didn't know what to say. This feeling irritated her heart. It was an emotion she had never seen in her endless years. Chapter 166 Chapter 162 Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement Dot 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 Asgard Bifrost Heimdall, the patron saint of Bifrost, the god of daybreak, stands here, guarding the entrance of the gods day and night. While the banquet was going on, Thor came to Bifrost. You're late, Heimdall stood tall like a towering mountain. Celebration feasts are sometimes more difficult than war. Thor walked forward with a smile, where is she, send me down. As always, she is very smart. Heimdall said, wait. What's the matter? Thor asked, I can't see her. At the same time, on earth, an abandoned factory in London, England, Jane Foster opened her eyes, and a harsh light entered her eyes. What happened? Jane wondered, she remembered that she went to a strange place, could it be a dream? Jane walked out of the abandoned factory. It was raining lightly, and there were a large number of policemen around. Among the policemen, Jane saw Daisy at a glance. Daisy. Jane trod over. Jane, where have you been? Daisy asked in surprise. You called the police. Jane asked. Otherwise, what should I do? You disappeared, I can't find you everywhere, I'm terrified. Daisy said. I was in the factory, and I didn't go there. When this is over, the police will notify the federal agent, and then S.H.I.E.L.D. will come and turn this area into Area 51. Advertisement. The gravity here is abnormal, no one hinders the research, and the only competitor is only 10 years old. Jane said. Jane, you disappeared for five hours, Daisy said. What? Jane couldn't believe it. At this time, the two people found light rain in the sky, but no raindrops fell where they stood, and the rain seemed to avoid here. It's weird, Daisy said. Centering on the two of them, there was no rain in a five-meter diameter circular area. At this moment, a figure appeared not far away from the two of them. Holding a hammer and wearing a red cloak. Jane walked over quickly, and suddenly, the rain fell towards Daisy and immediately poured her into a soup. You are here, Jane said happily. Yeah, during this time, I was busy cleaning up the mess my brother made, and finally free time. Thor said. Just when the two were preparing for me and me, Daisy ran over. Hey. Here you are. Daisy looked at Thor. I'm busy. Jane said. If you are busy, you have to deal with them first. I think we will be arrested. Daisy looked at the policeman over there. Wait for me. Jane walked towards the police. Sorry, that's my thing. When Jane walked over, the police had put their equipment in the car. Are you Jane Foster? A police officer asked. Yes. Do you know him? The officer pointed to the trainee Ian who was being searched behind him. Yes, he is my intern. Jane said, 
Interns intern. You are trespassing on private land, you have to follow me. The officer took Jane's arm, and within a short time, a dark red energy erupted from Jane's body, blasting the surrounding police officers out one after another, and the glass of the surrounding car was shattered instantly. Advertisement. Jane, are you okay? Upon seeing this, Thor walked over quickly and looked at Jane who was lying on the ground. Are you okay? Thor helped Jane up. Put your hands on your head. At this moment, all the police officers gathered around the two of them. She is very dangerous, put her hand on her head and step back. The officers cautiously approached Thor and the two. I'm in danger too. Thor looked at the police. Request the support of armed police. Repeat, request the support of armed police. The police officers immediately requested support from headquarters. Hold on to me. Thor looked at Jane. What's wrong? Jane asked. Thor hugged Jane and looked up to the sky. Suddenly, a burst of colorful light impacted, and the two of them disappeared in an instant, leaving only a circular mark on the ground. Dot 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 dot. A place of darkness and silence. Here, the sky is dim, and the earth is black. Here is the place abandoned by the light. This was the place where Asgard's army and the Dark Elves fought a battle thousands of years ago. The fierce battle turned this place into ruins and nothing more. Malkis, the leader of the Dark Elves, stood in this quiet ruined place, and he could clearly feel the familiar smell of darkness even in the past thousands of years. The destruction of the Dark Elves allowed a few of them to survive, waiting for another opportunity to come. Now that the Aether has appeared, and the Nine Realms are about to be connected together, their opportunity has come. Malekis knelt down. He pinched a handful of black sand and said, Look at what we have left, Algorum. Our survival will be your greatest wealth. A strong Dark Elf walked over. He was Algorum in Makas's mouth, the most powerful warrior of the Dark Elf. I can hardly remember the darkness of the world. Malekis threw the black sand on the ground. The Asgard people let us suffer this, and I will ask them to double it back soon. Advertisement. I want to recapture the ether and rebuild our world. I want to end this fallen universe. Dot dot dot. But how do we retrieve the ether? Where is the ether? Algorum asked. I know where it is, and I can sense it. Malekis walked back into the spaceship. It's in Asgard. Arriving in the spaceship, Malekis took out the last etheric fragment hidden by the Dark Elf. This is a diamond-shaped stone with a scarlet pattern, born under the warmth of the power of the ether, and he can bestow the Dark Elves with powerful power. But I need a warrior to enter Asgard as the vanguard of our attack. Malekis picked up the ether fragment. No one is more suitable than me. Algorum said, he is the most powerful warrior of the Dark Elves, and it is time to dedicate to the Dark Elves. I am willing to sacrifice myself, just like the sacrifices our people have made, and the sacrifices you made. Algorum looked at Malekis. Nine realms are about to join together, and you will be the last, sacrifice. Malekis drew his dagger and walked towards Algorum. You will be the messenger of darkness. Malekis pierced the dagger into Algorim's waist and hid the etheric fragments in the wound. Only in this way could they sneak into Asgard without being spotted by them. You will maintain this state until your life is exhausted. Malekis said, until then, our enemies are not your opponents. I will completely defeat their defenses and help you rebuild the dark universe. Algorum said. Malekis nodded, and he asked several of his men to take out heavy armor and a helmet with horns. Go, I'm waiting for your good news. Malekis said. Dot dot dot. Chapter 167 Chapter 163. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Asgard. Bifrost. Asgard's soldiers walked out of Bifrost with countless prisoners who had rioted in the Nine Kingdoms. One of them was tall and burly, with a helmet with horns. On the other side, Thor and Odin also discovered the Aether in Jane Fortes, which shocked them. Especially Thor, the Dark Elf, the Aether, this is the story he heard when he was a child. In order to take out the Aether in Jane Foster, the healing magicians of God's domain tried everything, but it was useless. The Aether is not a dead thing. It has its own thoughts. Anyone close to Jane Foster wants to take it away. People with ether power will pay a heavy price. The banquet was still in progress, and Li Wei had already defeated one of his opponents. In front of him, several warriors of God's domain had already lain down. At this time, there was noisy outside, and a group of God's domain soldiers rushed in and shouted, All the soldiers gather. The soldiers of God's domain are very disciplined. Even if they drink in the dark, all the soldiers can still be neat and tidy, except for a few guys who fell on the ground when they were drunk. This is when Thor strode in. Go to dungeon, there are prisoners making trouble. They have rushed up. At this moment, Sif, one of the three warriors of the god's domain, rushed in from outside. In the dungeon of the gods, the detainees are all villains who have gone to the nine kingdoms in the universe to cause chaos, and they are all very powerful. These prisoners have been detained for decades or hundreds of years. 
Prisoners who desire freedom are released. How can Dungeon's guards resist these prisoners? Outside, there was a deafening shout. Sure enough, as Sif said, the prisoners have already been killed here. With a scream, a few soldiers of God's domain were thrown in. What appeared in front of everyone was a stone man about three or four meters high. Advertisement. Roar. The stone man roared, and several soldiers of God's domain attacked it, but they flew out with one punch. Thor strode over, and he shook the sledgehammer Mernir, which smashed the stone man into nothing with one hammer. For Asgard. Thor raised the hammer and rushed out, the soldiers of God's domain all following him. Thor rushed to the outside corridor, and the other side of the corridor was full of prisoners. He swung a hammer and suddenly several prisoners were blown out. Crack. Lightning roar screamed, and the silver lightning rushed out, and the prisoners were knocked down one by one. Put down all your weapons, or you will see Thor's anger. Thor roared, and he raised the hammer of Merneil. Bang. Suddenly, a black shadow attacked and threw Thor directly away. Thor got up from the ground, and he looked forward. It was a big burly guy with an evil aura. But how could Thor be afraid? Thor roared and rushed towards the burly fellow, and the hammer Mernir slammed at the fellow fiercely. The burly big guy punched Thor with a backhand. Ooh, suddenly, the prisoners behind him heard a roar of joy and roar. I am Algorum, come here if I am not afraid of death. The burly big guy is Algorum who was caught in the dungeon. Using ether fragments, he broke Asgard's cage and successfully freed these prisoners to attract the attention of the Asgard so that Malkis, the leader of the Dark Elves, could carry out his plan. Algorum, right, let me see what capital you have to dare to yell in front of Thor. Thor rushed towards Algorum with his legs on the ground, and the whole person jumped towards Algorum, and the hammer Mjolnir slammed down Algorim's head severely. You were not born when I was fighting your father's father, kid. Algorim's strong arms leaned forward, grabbing Thor by the neck, and smashing him to the ground. Advertisement. Boom. The ground exploded, and dense cracks appeared. Save Thor. Sif, one of the three warriors, rushed towards Algorim with his soldiers. Algorim's mouth showed a scornful smile, and his other hand grasped his fist and slapped forward. Suddenly, dark red energy rushed out, and the soldiers of God's domain wailed and fell down, being taken away by this powerful force. Life. Even the powerful Sif was stunned by the dark red energy, and his back was smashed against the cylinder, and a mouthful of blood came out. What? Boy, don't you dare to speak wild words now. Algorim looked at Thor under him. You are just outdated people, losers beaten and fled by my grandfather. Thor roared, he raised his hammer, and the lightning roar screamed in the sky. Mjolnir struck Algorim with a thunderbolt of lightning. A crack appeared in Algorim's helmet for an instant, and the whole person was shaken out. Thor quickly got up from the ground and swung a hammer to knock down several prisoners who wanted to attack him. Dot 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 dot. At the same time, at the entrance of Asgard, Bifrost. There was a wave of fluctuations in the air, and a doubt flashed in the eyes of the gatekeeper Heimdall standing here. He seemed to feel something evil entering Asgard, but his eyes told him that it was an illusion. Heimdall turned and looked behind him, the feeling never disappeared. Immediately, Heimdall chose to trust his instincts. He rushed out of Bifrost, climbed onto Bifrost's suspension cable, and flew into the air. Sure enough, a fighter plane emerged. Heimdall drew out his long sword and pierced it into the fighter's engine. With a, boom, the fighter exploded and Heimdall was shaken out. He tossed in the air and landed on Bifrost. At this time, at the front of Bifrost, a huge sword-shaped spaceship appeared. Advertisement. As soon as this sword-shaped spacecraft appeared, it released a large number of fighters towards the Asgard Palace group. Dot 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 dot. The other side. This guy is really not bad. Thor leaned on the cylinder and gasped. At this time, a dark red energy wave attacked Thor, and he twisted his body to avoid the attack. With a, bang, the dark red energy smashed the huge amounts of the column. Boom boom boom. Boom boom, the, sacrifice, the dark elf Algorum, who was strengthened by the etheric power, walked towards Thor. Asgard people, your protective shield has been destroyed by me, and Makas's army will soon be killed. Algorum walked towards Thor. Thor raised his hammer, Milner, and smashed it towards Algorum, but Algorum knocked him to the ground with a punch and kicked Thor in his lower abdomen. Kicked out. Your target is Jane. Thor roared with flushed face. Go to hell, Asgard. Algorum dashed towards Thor hitting Thor in the chest. Ah, uh, Thor snorted, and the whole person rushed out behind him, hitting a column, directly smashing the column, and smashing his back against the wall. Algorum continued to rush forward, and in the blink of an eye he came to Thor, and his sandbag big fist bombarded Thor's head. Do not. Stop. Dot dot dot. Chapter 168 Chapter 164. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Do not. Stop.
Sif shouted, and she ran towards Algorim, but it was too late. Algorim's arm and fist were wrapped with dark red power, and he hit Thor's head with unstoppable force. Huh, Algorim said in surprise, because his fist was a few centimeters away from Thor's head and was blocked by a thin arm. Tor, the goal of these people is ether, you go first and leave it to me here. Li Wei turned his head and said to Thor. Okay. Thor quickly got up. He shook his hammer and leapt towards the sky. Want to go? How easy is it? Asgard. Algorim chased Thor, but it found that its arm was firmly fixed by the bald head in front of him, and it couldn't even move a step. Your opponent is me. Li Wei looked at the sacrifice, who was strengthened by the etheric power. In the movie, even the most ordinary dark elf warrior, after being strengthened by the power of the ether, is so fierce as not to say. The ordinary Asgard warrior is not his opponent at all, let alone the burly guy in front of him. This guy was originally the most powerful warrior among the Dark Elves. After gaining the strength of the Aether and becoming a sacrificer, his strength was even more terrifying. Even Thor was hammered by him. Who do you think you are? Algorim saw Thor let go, and he roared angrily, and fisted with the other arm and hit Livy's head fiercely. Li Wei stretched out his hand and held Algorim's other arm. A terrifying force came from Li Wei's arm, into his body, and finally fell on the ground. There was a sound of, bang bang bang, and dense cracks appeared on the ground. Algorim was shocked, the little man actually blocked its attack. Advertisement. Algorim drew his hand hard, but found that the palm of the guy in front of him firmly fixed his fist. Ah, Algorim exhausted his whole body strength, the blue script violent on his arm, but found that he still couldn't get rid of the bald palm in front of him. And this guy looked at him with a smile, as if to say, strong hard. Is that enough? Li Wei's eyes looked at Algorim like a crescent moon. Go to hell. Algorim no longer freed his arm, he lifted his foot and kicked it towards Li Wei's chest. But Li Wei's foot was faster than Algorim's. The moment it lifted its foot, Li Wei also kicked it. Boom. Li Wei's toes touched Algorim's lower abdomen, and the heavy armor on it shattered in an instant. Algorim's pupils were bloodshot and red, and his whole body rushed out behind him, and everything that stood in front of it was hit and flew mercilessly. After impacting for hundreds of meters, Algorim smashed a wall fiercely, and dense cracks appeared on his body. Li Weifei came to Algorim and said, can you still fight? Algorim roared and quickly got up from the ground, a large amount of dark red energy burst out of his body. These energies were wrapped around its arm like a thin snake, and it stepped forward, bombarding Li Wei with its fists. Boom. The force of terror squeezed the air and made a sharp piercing sound. Just when Algorim's fist was only a few centimeters away from Li Wei's cheek, Li Wei reached out and held his fist, Algorim's smile suddenly fell. And not enough. Li Wei shook his head, the power of the ether fragments also disappointed him too much. I thought that the ether was one of the six infinite gems, and the ether fragments born under the warmth of its power would have powerful power. The Dark Elf. Sacrifice that has been strengthened by the ether fragments should allow him to fight happily, but it is such a weak force that he did not expect. Advertisement. Li Wina's indifferent gaze made Algorim the, sacrifice, angrily. It is the most powerful warrior of the Dark Elf, and even the so-called Thor is far from its opponent. How dare this bald say such a thing? Algorim retreated back and forth, and only when he had a sufficient safe distance from Levi, did it use the real power hidden in its body. As everyone knows, Li Wei did not even bother to attack it, or attack it when it broke out. Li Wei wished that the stronger it was, the better, it would be too boring. Ah! Algorim let out a low roar, a terrifying force burst out of its body, and bursts of dark red energy swept out towards the surroundings. Crack! All the buildings within the range of this dark red energy collapsed one after another, and a lot of cracks appeared. Boom boom boom! Dense cracks appeared on the ground, and then cracks opened. With Algorim's low roar, Dark red energy wrapped around it, its pupils were red, its muscles swelled in a circle, and a faint red mist radiated from its body. Roar. Algorim let out a heavy gasp, and a light red mist roar came out of his mouth. Boom. In an instant, the ground burst and Algorim rushed towards Li Wei. Algorim's speed was as fast as thunder and lightning. In an instant, it came to Li Wei, but Li Wei didn't seem to notice its attack, and even his eyes didn't fluctuate. Algorim smiled contemptuously its arms wrapped in dark red energy, and its fists bombarded Li Wei's head. In the next moment, this bald body will evaporate under its powerful force, leaving no trace. Speed is enough, but power is far from enough. Li Wei's voice caused Algorim's pupils to shrink violently. In the next moment, the bald head did not evaporate under its power as it had imagined, but instead held its fist with one hand. Boom. The ground exploded. With Li Wei as the center, dense cracks appeared within a radius of tens of meters. Advertisement. This, 
This is impossible. Algorum could hardly believe what it saw. It looks like this is your limit. It's so boring. Goodbye. Li Wei raised his fist. In an instant, Algorim's pupils shrank violently, and a fear of fear surged into his heart, and even the etheric power in it seemed to be screaming frantically. What kind of power is this? Algorim had never seen such a terrifying power. Boom. The ground burst, and Algorim flew back again and again, and roar sucked for a while. It was already a safe distance of hundreds of meters from the bald head. Wait. At this moment, Algorim was horrified to find that the bald figure a hundred meters away was an afterimage. What a fast speed. Algorim was stunned, because it saw that the bald head had appeared behind it from the outside. Ah. Fear made Algorim roar. It quickly turned around. Dark red energy wrapped around its arm, and its fist bombarded Li Wei. Boom. The next moment, Algorim's body burst open, and his shattered body splashed in the air. It's so boring. Li Wei murmured expressionlessly. Comma. Chapter 169 Chapter 165 Reality Gem, The Strongest. Close Black Lens Bracket. Previous Chapter. Next Chapter. Advertisement. Dot dot dot. Under the deterrence of Li Wei's absolute force, the prisoners who participated in the riot quickly gave up resistance. At the beginning, there were many powerful monsters clamoring, but when these monsters completely evaporated under Li Wei's punch, the prisoners were quiet. Honestly, don't play tricks. Asgard soldiers put the prisoners in dungeon again. But the war is not over, it has just begun. In the distant sky, a huge amounts of sword-shaped spacecraft appeared, flying towards the Asgard palace, and countless fighters appeared from the huge spacecraft, crowded toward the palace. For the Dark Elf sword-shaped spacecraft, Li Wei is very familiar with it, because there is one floating above his rainbow island. Boom boom boom. There were many magic cannons in front of the Asgard palace. With the bombardment of energy cannons, fighter planes were shot down and fell towards the city below. This is a disaster. Sif, one of the three warriors in the hallway, said as he looked at the densely packed fighter planes appearing in the sky. For the fighters, this is also a carnival. Li Wei said. As soon as the voice fell, Li Wei flew towards the dark elf fighter group in the distance, punched out, a piece of fighter plane exploded and fell from the sky. It's a carnival for monsters like you, Sif murmured. Li Wei Fei landed on a dark elf fighter plane and struck out with a punch. The fighter plane exploded with a bang and turned into a firework blooming in the air. Boom. With a loud sound, Li Wei turned into a golden lightning and shuttled across the battlefield in the sky, and dark elf fighters were destroyed by him with extreme violence. At this time, a fighter jet rushed towards Li Wei, and Li Wei stretched out his hand to withstand the attacking fighter jet. Advertisement. Boom. The fighter plane shattered directly, and Li Wei was taken in by the fighter plane. There are several dark elf soldiers in the fighter plane, armed with energy guns and shooting at Li Wei. Boom boom boom. The energy bullet hit Li Wei. Splashing sparks, Li Wei punched out, and the fighter exploded with a bang. Dot 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 dot. At the same time, in the Odin Palace, the Dark Elves have already entered here, one by one, the soldiers of God's domain fell under the siege of countless Dark Elves. Malkis, the leader of the Dark Elf, passed through the fighting crowd. Its goal was simple, the etheric power was calling it. Soon, Malekis passed through the palace complex and came to Queen Asgard's palace. In the bedroom, Queen Frasia and Jane Foster were among them. Get down, monster. Frasia drew a dagger, otherwise I will be welcome. I'm not so scared, ma'am. Malekis walked straight to Freya. Who are you? Freya asked. I am Malkis, the leader of the Dark Elves. I came here to retrieve my things. There is nothing for you here. After speaking, Frasia took the lead to attack, and the dagger wanted to stab at Malekis. Malekis avoided Freya's attack, drew the long knife from his waist and slashed towards Freya, but was blocked by her. Frasia stretched out her hand, a beam of light erupted from her hand, hit Malachis' body, and flew it out, hitting her back hard against the wall, and dense cracks appeared on the wall. Malekis got up from the ground, wrapped a black aura in his hand, struck Freya with a thunderous force, and knocked her out. Frasia groaned on the ground, her body exuding a faint black aura, and her body became rigid. Malekis walked to Jane Foster, and he said, you took something that didn't belong to you, boy. Advertisement. Come back. Jane wanted to escape but Malekis appeared in front of her instantly, pinching her neck with his arm. But Malekis found that it did not hold the entity, and the girl in front of him disappeared as a faint light and shadow. Which, Malekis looked at Freya angrily, where is she? You will never know, Freya said triumphantly. Then you go to die. Malekis stepped forward quickly, pinched her neck, and the black aura on his arm pierced Freya's body like a sharp dagger. No, at this moment, a deafening roar sounded. Crack. A silver lightning struck Makasa's cheek fiercely, directly blasting it out. Ah. Thor flew up, 
and the hammer Mjolnir threw it at Malekis. At this time, Malekis had already jumped off the balcony, and a fighter plane took it down and flew to the Dark Elf spaceship. Thor rushed forward quickly, and the hammer Mjolnir threw it at the ship. The sword-shaped spaceship of the Dark Elf disappeared in the air and gradually disappeared. Dot 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 dot. Rainbow Island. A ray of light fell from the sky, and Li Wei walked out of the light. After helping the people of God's domain to repel the Dark Elves' attack, Li Wei returned to Earth. Next, it was Thor and his brother Loki. In the end, they failed, and Malkis, the leader of the Dark Elves, came to Earth with full etheric power. Tie particles are reality gem. Advertisement. It is said that this gem may be the most powerful, and the use of this gem can truly and without exaggeration turn opinions into reality. But at the same time, this gem is also the most difficult to use. With it, any idea can be realized. All scientific codes and laws of nature are meaningless before it, because it can modify them at will. But this gem cannot be used alone, without the aid of other gems, the consequences will be devastating to the user. Therefore, the Dark Elf Malekis can only use part of the power of the gem, and cannot use the alter reality rule at will, otherwise it will be invincible long ago. Back in the villa, to Li Wei's surprise, there are other visitors in the villa. The man under the sea that Li Wei found when he was exploring the trench last time. These seamen wear clothing like spacesuits, with a round glass cover on their heads, half of the air and half of the water. The leader is the regent who looks like an eel. Li, they have been waiting for you for a long time. Eddie is the only person in the villa. Really, Li Wei was surprised, he didn't have much friendship with these people on the bottom of the sea. Moreover, how do they know that they are coming back today? King of Atlantis, what are you doing here? Levi stepped forward and asked. The hero of the human world, even if we live on the bottom of the sea, we have heard of your prestige a long time ago. Seeing Li Wei, Al Erha suddenly smiled. Are these people on the bottom of the sea also flattering? Nothing to do is to commit crimes or to steal. Li Wei's expression remained unchanged and he gave an official compliment, exaggerating the civilization of Atlantis, saying that it was a madness, and what words were gorgeous, what words they used, these people on the bottom of the sea see that Li Wei is better than they can say, and immediately explain he wanted to stop Li Wei from continuing. Comma. Chapter 170 Chapter 166 Quantity doesn't make any sense to me. Close black lens bracket. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Li, see what we have brought you. Regent Al Erha pointed to the courtyard of the villa, which was full of worn out boxes, some boxes had been opened, and they were full of gold. Li Wei still had a smile on his face, but his brain was already thinking about the purpose of these people on the bottom of the sea. He was not sure just now, but now he is sure, this group of people from the bottom of the sea have something to ask him. King Al, just talk about it if you have anything to do. I believe you can come here in person. Your goal is not as simple as giving gold. Li Wei said. The main thing is to give gold, but in fact there is also a small matter. King Al Eha said. Listen thoroughly. Li Wei said. That's right, you should have heard of Namor. King Al Eha said. I heard it. Li Wei nodded. There are some misunderstandings between us and Namor. In order for us Atlantis to develop further, we need to be united. Each kingdom should consider each other and compromise with each other. So we wrote a formal protocol. Undersea creatures live together in humility, harmony and equality. Not everything needs to be resolved by war, peace requires compromise. And Namor also agreed to this negotiation, but you know, he got the Seagid's halberd, this artifact has the power to rule the sea, if he is against me in the middle of the negotiation, I think we can only catch it with our hands. So we want to ask you to act as an intermediary. Out of your prestige, I believe Namor dare not mess around. King Al Erha stated his purpose. After this is done, I will have a generous gift to thank the three kingdoms, he said. Dot 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 dot. Li Wei understood that the focus of this negotiation is compromise. Advertisement. Was it the compromise of the three kingdoms of the regent Al Ohar, or the compromise of Namor? Cannibals are soft and short. These guys have brought all the gold up, and it's really hard for him to refuse. All right. Li Wei agreed. After all, it's not a big deal, it's just a question of a trip. Suddenly, the people on the bottom of the sea were delighted. Their kingdom, under the threat of force from Namor, was already crumbling. If this negotiation fails, then a war will break out among the Atlanteans, and when they get the Poseidon's halberd from Namor, the scale of victory has already tilted towards him. Where is the negotiation location? Li Wei asked. It's just under a bay not far from the island. King Loha said. Are we leaving now? There are still a few hours. Good. Dot 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 dot. A bay not far from Rainbow Island. At this moment, Li Wei is already sitting with the three kings of Atlantis and Namor in an ancient building designed by a temple. Each king can only bring one guard of honor, 
and Li Wei acts as a middleman to listen to their undersea people. Like these people on the seabed, Li Wei didn't wear any protective clothing, and just sat under the weight of the sea. Li Wei himself also didn't know how much impact his body could withstand. The heavy pressure on the sea floor had almost no effect on him. He was more free than these sea people. As for Roar's inhalation, Li Wei held his breath for a few days if he wanted to hold his breath for a few days. In the temple building, there are five seats. Among them, King Al Eha and his two allies are sitting aside, Levi is sitting aside, and Namor is sitting on the opposite side of King Al Eha. Behind Namor is his guard of honor. These undersea people are completely different from King El Eha. The undersea people behind Namor are 80% similar to humans. The skin is blue, with some fish characteristics. It seems that the subordinates that Namor found were the authentic Atlanteans. Advertisement. We make the following proposal. The score area, including the Hashes site, can enter 20% of the abandoned dark areas, including access to ancient caves. King El Erha said, You are asking too much. Namor was silent, and a female undersea man in armor spoke behind him. Her name is Andromeda, once the leader of the Atlanteans. They are pure Atlanteans. After Atlantis sank, some Atlantis fled from extinction. They wander in the sea and have no fixed homes. Until Namor appeared, all the Atlanteans returned to Namor's command, and the Atlanteans once again ruled the sea. This request is not too much. King Al Erha said in a bad tone, you robbed our territory as soon as you showed up. That belonged to us, we are willing to make some sacrifices, so this negotiation has occurred. Andromeda said. But there is almost no sacrifice. This is unacceptable, King Al Erha said angrily. And your statement is unfounded. We enjoy the same water. Although you did not distribute it to us, you cannot ask for it, and you cannot control everything. Namo, you must compromise. King Al Erha stood up excitedly and pointed to Namor's nose. The soldiers behind him immediately became agitated, as if they would fight if they didn't agree. And Li Wei, the middleman, manicured his nails, showing no signs of stopping. At this moment, Namor, who was silent, stood up from his seat. When you are sleeping, everything changes, old king, Namor said. And it's developing in a better direction. I agree to set up this meeting to see your faces and see with your own eyes what is awakened from the ancient dark age. Now I'm thinking about what I want to do. Namor looked at King Loha. What are you talking about? King Al Erha looked at Namor in surprise. Humph. Namor snorted coldly. Advertisement. This is the answer you want. After speaking. Namor threw the Seagid's halberd in his hand, and nailed King Al Eha to the stone chair with a thunderous force. Compromise. Absolute. Namor roared. He flew forward, pulled out the Seagid's halberd, and stabbed it at the other king of Mackerel. The king of the Mackerel gave a startled roar, and immediately stood up to resist, but was knocked to the ground with a punch by Namo, and the Poseidon's halberd stabbed him in the head. In Atlantis, under the sea, there will only be one king. That's me, Namor. Namor almost roared, and the undersea people behind him immediately fought with the men and horses brought by the three shark kings. Killer. Kill him, kill them. The soldiers of the three king sharks and the soldiers of Namor fought together. At this time, more shark people appeared outside, who were arranged by the three shark kings. I knew you would be like this. Namos was not afraid. Now we have more people than you, Namor, you killed King El Eha and King Naha, you must die. King Oha the only remaining three shark kings, roared, and all the shark soldiers outside began to attack and surround the Namor regiment. Quantity. Ha 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 ha. Dot dot dot. Chapter 171 Chapter 167 Ultra Ancient Dark Creature. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Quantity. Ha ha ha. In front of my Namor, these are meaningless. I will tear you all to pieces. Namor gripped the Seagid's halberd and swept forward. A large number of sharks died tragically, blood stained the sea. Do you think that after a few thousand years, I will forget you? You old Atlanteans, creatures of ancient dark relics, are the plagues of the sea. You, predator, him, him, predators and contributors, you can only kill, destroy, and rule like a greedy beast. Large area. Thousands of years ago, the ancestors of Atlantis defeated you and obliterated your existence. Only when the king passed the throne can we see three different races in the historical record. I am the one who knows your bloody history. Before I came here, I had already made a decision that I would not let you survive. I want to kill you thoroughly like my ancestors. Namor roared, and quickly stepped forward, rushing towards the only remaining King Oha, and the sharks who stood in front of him were torn apart by the Seagid's halberd. You can't stop me, I am the king of the sea. Namor smashed a bloody road surrounded by dense sharks, came to King Oha, pressed him to the ground, and put the Seagid's halberd on his neck. Do you have any last words? Namor said cruelly. Namo. 
You believe your history credulously, that is a narrative of our history. The rise of every race will inevitably be accompanied by blood and killing. King Oha shouted. You can't kill me. If I die, the old Atlanteans will seek revenge from you. You will live in war forever, regretting your mistakes. King Oha shouted. Your threat has no power at all. Take it to death. The Seagid's halberd in Namor's hand stabs King Oha. Advertisement. Enough. At this time, a voice sounded and Li Wei stood up from his seat, and Namor's movement stopped. Namor looked at Li Wei. He said, this is the grudge of our Atlanteans, and it has nothing to do with you. The bloodshed today is almost the end. It's time to end this farce. I don't care about your historical grievances. In short, you killed the two kings. The grievances are understood here, and they must not seek revenge from you. Li Wei looking at King Oha, do you agree? I agree, I agree. King Oha said again and again, the icy blade of the Seagid's halberd had pierced his skin, and he could not agree to it. Namor frowned, his eyes fixed on Li Wei who stood up. The two eyes collided, and everyone could feel that the flow of the sea was chaotic, and there was no rule to speak of. The fighting between the old and the new Atlantis stopped temporarily, staring at the two nervously. If the negotiation does not agree, they will kill each other as soon as possible. It seemed that a long time had passed, but it seemed that only a moment later, Namor let go of King Oha. Well, our grievances are over today. Let's talk about the terms again. Namor took his seat again. King Oha sat cautiously on his seat, he was almost the same as the two corpses on the ground. Your territory, except for the dark ruins, must be returned to us. Except for the dark ruins that you have explored, you give up the remaining access rights. Namor said. Hearing such harsh conditions, King Oha wanted to rage on the spot, which simply didn't give them any chance of development, but when his foresight was aimed at the two corpses on the ground, he gritted his teeth and agreed. After King Oha left with his tribe, only Li Wei and Namor were in the temple. Does it feel awkward, Namor? Li Wei said, it's not a good thing that you mixed up. You know that I want these guys to die before I will wave my hands. You know there will be a war. Namor said with his hands on his back, I am the king of the sea, when do you have the right to manage what about our Atlanteans? Advertisement. I know, I don't have any rights, but I am in it now, am I? Li Wei said. Namo, since the agreement has been finalized, you have to abide by the agreement. Li Wei continued. I never follow any shit protocol. No one can control me Namor. But since it's you, then I will let those guys make a living. If I find that they are still the style of the previous dark times, then I will still destroy them. When Li Wei spoke, he looked at Namor and said, Namo, it is said that your Seagid's halberd has the power to control the sea. Not bad, Namor said. In the sea, there is no one against me. I control thousands of sea beasts and can easily destroy a country. If it weren't for you today, I only need to control the sea beasts once they pass, and then the cancers of the ocean can be flattened. It's not that simple, otherwise the old Atlantis people would be so afraid of you. Li Wei said. I'm already awakening, I am the sea now, and the sea is me. Namor said. Then you must also want to know where your strength is now. Li Wei looked at Namor, I want to know too. Boring. Namor walked away with the people under his hands. Uninteresting. Li Wei also left. Not long after, a spray splashed on the sea, and a figure appeared from the spray and flew towards Rainbow Island. At the moment a ship was passing by, and a crew member looked at the sea in confusion. He seemed to see something washed away from the sea and then disappeared in the sky. Rainbow Island. Advertisement. When Li Wei entered the villa, he saw Max, the electro-optical man who had disappeared a lot at a glance. Li Wei was sitting on the sofa. Suddenly, there was a thunder in the clear sky, and then a silver lightning thundered down. Today's weather is a bit strange. Eddie walked into the yard, and he looked up at the clear sky. Obviously there was no dark cloud, but suddenly there was a thunder and lightning. Wait for a thundering guy to appear. Just as Li Wei's voice fell, a bolt of lightning struck down from the sky, and a guy in armor and a red cloak appeared behind him. Asgard, Thor. Except for Thor, a figure appeared in the yard immediately, Iron Man Tony. Stark. Lee, we need your help. Thor strode into the hall. The Dark Elves have already got the Thai particles and are on their way to the Earth. No one can match it with the power of ether. When the Nine Kingdoms are connected together, it will destroy the Nine Kingdoms and let the universe fall back into in the dark. Thor said. Waiting for it for a long time. Infinite gems, right, I want to see how strong it is. Li Wei said with interest. Then let's go. Li Wei got up and said. Dot dot dot. Chapter 172 Chapter 168 Justice Punch. Close black lens bracket. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. UK. London. Greenwich District.
In order to deal with the Dark Elves using the power of the Aether to destroy the world while the Nine Worlds are in a line, Jane Foster and Thor split their arms. Thor went to find support, and Jane and Dr. Eric and Assistant Daisy and her interns came to Greenwich. They have already calculated that the Dark Elves will appear here. Because this is the starting point for the world to calculate time and geographic longitude. Seriously, this is very important. Daisy and her intern Ian lifted Dr. Eric's peak gravity meter out of the car. We must arrange them around the station. Daisy said, their task is to plug these scientific devices around to stabilize the real space, so that Jane and Eric can start from the tower. Do you know how to use this thing? Daisy asked. Uh, Dr. Eric didn't say. Ian said, I don't know, but just plug it around. That should be it. The two lifted the peak gravity meter outside and inserted it into the lawn. Wait, what is that? Suddenly, Ian said in astonishment. Daisy turned her head to look, and saw that a huge wave suddenly stirred up on the lake in front, as if something was making waves in it. Suddenly, there was a wave of fluctuations in the space, and a huge sword-shaped spacecraft was moving in the lake, rushing in the direction of the two. Advertisement. Run. The two ran away recklessly. The bottom of the sword-shaped spacecraft was directly inserted into the ground, and the ground was overturned immediately. Oh my god, what is that? What's the matter with him? Run. Ah. Suddenly, Roar's voice came in a panic, and the surrounding citizens escaped here with the fastest speed in their lives. Boom. The sword-shaped spaceship stopped, and the Dark Elf leader Malekis walked out of the spaceship, followed by countless Dark Elf soldiers. The world is about to become one piece. I will complete a great cause to end the universe and return the universe to the order of the Dark Elves. Malekis looked at the overlapping phenomena of the Nine Kingdoms in the sky, and it knew. It is about to succeed. No one can resist it anymore, no one can resist the power of the ether. Crack. At this moment, there was a thunder in the sky, and a bolt of lightning struck, and Thor flew onto the ground. Asgard, you can't stop me. Malekis looked at Thor. Have you forgotten how you failed before? It seems that the death of your brother hasn't made you realize yet. What about us, monster? At this moment, a figure flew from the sky. Iron Man Tony, Stark. Above Iron Man, a fighter plane appeared, and Maka's eyes flashed with surprise, that fighter plane was the technology of their Dark Elves. How does the human world have it? On the fighter plane, a burly black figure jumped down and landed on the ground with a, bang, Venom Eddie. Roar. Venom roared at Malekis. Hiss. Around the building, electric lights flickered, dense electric currents gathered, and an electric current person appeared. Electro-Optical Max. Advertisement. In the air, a white cloak fluttered in the wind, and a yellow figure stood in the air with his arms folded in front of his chest. Bald Cape Man, Golden Flash, Golden Lightning, Fist of Power, Fist of Justice, and the strongest power Li Wei. If Deadpool Wade were here, he would definitely complain about, why does this guy have so many code names? You don't need to be like that. Malekis looked at the people who appear here to stop it, your world has never made sense. Let me take you into the real world. No matter how philosophical you say, you will only have one destiny today, and that is to fall under my righteous fist. Li Wifei fell. Come on, I have long heard that the power of the ether is strong enough to destroy the world, let us fight a good fight. Li Wei raised his fist and said seriously. Boom. Li Wei stepped forward, and the ground exploded. He rushed towards the dark elf. Faced with such a powerful force, every cell in Li Wei's body seemed to jump for joy, and he took the lead in launching an attack. Hope this guy doesn't let himself down. Justice punch. In an instant, Li Wei appeared in front of the Dark Elf, and his fist slammed at Malekith with roars tearing air sounds. Suddenly, there was a wave of fluctuations in the space in front of Malekis, and Li Wei disappeared all of a sudden, except for a sound called, F King. Uh, Malekis shrugged, I'm waiting for you. What happened? Iron Man Tony flew down next to Thor, he asked. Well, I don't understand it when I say it. According to Jane and their explanation, it seems that the Nine Realms are now connected together, and the space is extremely unstable. The Nine Kingdoms affect each other, well, and then they may travel to other worlds at any time. Go. Thor explained stiffly. Advertisement. Well, our task now is to defeat this guy in front of us. Tony said. It's true, but it's not that simple. The power of the ether is far beyond your knowledge of power. Thor said. The stronger the enemy, the better. Since my steel battle suit upgrade, my reaction speed and strength have increased a lot. Tony rushed towards the Dark Elf. Boom. With a bang, Tony. Stark's figure turned into a black shadow and rushed behind him, hitting the ground fiercely, and tumbling on the ground for more than 10 meters before stopping. Uh, I don't think it's so great. At this moment, Thor also launched an attack. At the same time, Eddie the Venom and Max the Lightning Man also attacked Malekith. 
Crack. The sky flashed thunderously, and thick silver lightning bolted down. One part of the lightning struck Max, the lightning man, and the other part struck Thor's hammer, Minel, and then from the hammer. The impact came out from the middle, and screamed towards the darkness Maleki's roar. Boom. The electric light masterpiece, one by one dark elves fell under the impact of lightning. Maleki stretched out his hand, tie particles surged, and a circular dark red energy shield appeared on it. The dense lightning hit the dark red energy shield, but could not break through the defense of the energy shield. His hiss. At this moment, the electro-optical man was filled with blue arcs. After Thor's lightning was charged, his power reached its peak at this moment. Boom. A thunder energy shockwave let out a deafening roar and rushed down towards Maleki's. Boom. The thunder energy wave impacted on Malekis' energy shield, making a roaring sound. The dense electric current rushed towards the surroundings, and the dark elves were screened before they even had time to scream. The arc in the air penetrated the body. Dot dot dot. Chapter 173 Chapter 169. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. It's useless. The electric light dissipated, and the dark red energy shield disappeared. Malekis stepped out. With a big hand, the dark red etheric power turned into countless energy rays and blasted towards several people, hitting them. Thor threw him out directly on him. The electric man in the air was directly penetrated by the dark red energy. He looked at a big hole in his chest in astonishment. Fortunately, he quantized his body in an instant. Otherwise, with just one blow, he could make he died. Roar. A roar came, and the venom eddy rushed towards Malachus, and instantly came to it, his arm swelled in a circle, and he struck towards Malachus's face door. Bang. The ground shattered, and the venom attack hadn't even touched Malekis. The dark red energy between the gas and liquid pinched his neck and smashed him to the ground. Malkis burst into dark red energy, piercing the venom very sharply, and instantly stabbing the venom into a mess. Light will only give birth to such twisted creatures, and I will end this poisonous universe. Malekis stepped toward Thor. At this moment, an arm grabbed Malkis's footsteps, and it turned to look at the twisted black creature. Everyone is a monster, each other. Venom Eddy jumped up, and with a grinning roar, he slammed Makas's head with a punch and knocked it directly to the ground. The damn person is you. Venom roared, and its arm turned into a giant sickle, slashing towards Malekis. Malekis stretched out his hand to grab Venom's arm, and the dark red energy rolled up its body and stood up again. Malekis stepped forward and pinched Venom Eddy's neck, and the dark red energy wrapped around its arms instantly tore the Venom's body, revealing Eddy in it. Eddy's pupils contracted, full of consternation. Malekis threw Eddy into the distance. Advertisement. Bang. Eddy flew backwards like a cannonball, and directly smashed a cylinder and rolled it to the ground. His body was twisted, and the red blood was flowing all over the ground, and there was no trace of life. Looking at the twisted and roaring black liquid in his hand, but the increasingly weak creature, Malekis threw it aside. Dot 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 dot. Damn, what the hell is this place? Li Wei appeared here in a dark and quiet place. Here the sky is dim, the earth is gray, and there is no trace of life. Even the light was swallowed, and it seemed like a forgotten world. Just now, Li Wei fell into other dimensions in an instant. The most important thing was that he had just crossed from the earth to other worlds before he reacted. The world revolved in an instant, and he entered another world. In this way, after several consecutive traverses, Li Wei there is no way back to earth. At this time, not far from Li Wei, the space was distorted for a while, Li Wei rushed over and disappeared into this world. Li Wei stood in the air, with a virgin forest below. This was the inexplicable situation, the space was distorted, and after crossing several times, Li Wei was completely confused. How should I go back? Li Wei murmured. This is a big problem. He has always had a bad sense of direction. In the center of the virgin forest, there is a huge amount of tree, like a mushroom, which is about half of the average height of the virgin forest, which is very conspicuous. The more Li Wei came, the more familiar this tree became. It seemed to be the home of the elves in the country of elves, and the more they looked, the more they looked like. With a burst of sound, Li Wei flew towards the huge tree. As Li Wei approached, he could see the natural vine buildings above the home trees, and there were a large number of elves working on them and practicing magic. Yes, it's here, maybe they can help me back to earth, but it's not necessarily. Li Wei flew over. Advertisement. Boom. Suddenly, with a loud noise, Li Wei felt like he was hitting something. He stretched his hand forward, but felt nothing. It's strange. Li Wei murmured. At the same time, on the top of the tree canopy of the home, there is a building formed by bending and spreading vines. The elf queen is sitting on the throne. She is discussing something with several elders in the family. At this time, an elven elder hurriedly walked in. Queen, the enemy is coming. The enemy is coming. The elf elder said breathlessly. 
The burner. The elf queen immediately stepped off the throne. I don't know, but our magical defense was broken in an instant, and the enemy destroyed our defense with just one blow. I have never seen such power. The eyes of the elder elder were filled with consternation. Blow the horn of the alarm, summon the tribe, and prepare for battle. The elf queen acted vigorously and immediately made a decision. Soon, the sound of the wind roar screamed in the elves, home. All the elves heard this sound and immediately put aside their business, took up weapons and rushed towards the home tree. Mother, will it be the burner? On the canopy of the home tree, behind the elf queen stood a young girl, holding a bow and arrow in her hand and an arrow pod behind her back. They had only repelled the burner with the help of the people of God's domain before, and they did not expect these demons to come again. It shouldn't be the burner. I didn't smell their stench, said a gray-haired elder beside the elf girl. Is it him? At this moment, the elves found a figure flying towards them in the distant sky. Watch out. A group of elves are extremely nervous, and the power that can destroy their homeland's defensive magic in one blow cannot help but they are not nervous. Advertisement. Ready to attack. Wait. This person is a bit familiar. At this time, the elf girl stopped the queen who was about to give orders. What's the matter? The elf queen asked. He seems to be a human hero. The elf girl said uncertainly. Among the people, she was the one who had close contact with Li Wei. Are you sure? Didn't they return to Asgard? The elf queen and a group of elder elves looked at the distant figure, not to mention, the more they looked, the more they looked like. As this figure approaches, isn't it a human hero? At this moment, Li Wei in the sky is still wondering, do these elves know they are coming? Since they all came out to greet themselves, it would be too polite. Everyone, what are you guys? Li Weifei landed on the tree canopy. The great human hero, since it is you, it should be a false alarm. The elf queen smiled. What kind of false alarm? Li Wei asked. Just now we discovered that someone broke into our home without permission and broke the magic defense. We thought it was the enemy, but we didn't think it was you. At this moment, the elf girl said suddenly. That's the case, I still think I hit something, it turned out to be your magic defense. Li Wei grinned. Chapter 174 Chapter 170 Open Black Lens Bracket Deities as Power Close Black Lens Bracket Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement Human Hero Why are you here? Haven't you already followed the gods back to Asgard? The Elf Queen glanced at her daughter in surprise. Naturally, her daughter knew that she was so impatient today, who did not like to move. Looking at her shy look, she didn't know what her daughter thought. Which girl does not cherish spring? Which girl does not worship great heroes? Speaking of it, even though the human beings in front of him are just ordinary humans, without noble blood, and without any identity, they can possess such extraordinary powers, that they are not necessarily favored by any mysterious god in the universe. A great human hero, God's favor. My own daughter, the future queen of the elves, is also a good match. Naturally, Li Wei didn't know that the elf queen had so many scenes in her heart. After explaining her intentions, the elf queen and the elders expressed their helplessness. If it is normal, they will be able to locate the earth. Although the price is huge, it can also send Li Wei back to earth. But now the space is incomparably chaotic, and magic cannot be maintained in the chaotic space storm, let alone positioning the earth. Really, then I won't want to stay here for the rest of my life. Li Wei felt that the whole person was not good. Although the elves here are beautiful, kind, and understanding. But compared to finding an opponent and having a hearty battle, Li Wei's interest in the latter is as high as 99.99999%. If there is no opponent, then what is the use of this power? Actually, it's pretty good here. The elf girl interjected, seeing a group of elders looking at her, and her face suddenly became ruddy. Is there no way? Li Wei asked. Let us look through the ancient magic books to see if there is any record of this situation in our ancestors, said an elder elder. Advertisement. Dot 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 dot. London, England. Greenock. As this guy still saved. Max, the electric light man, appeared beside the terrible Eddie's body. Although he didn't have much contact with this guy, he was still a teammate at any rate. Max also knew about this guy's ability. Even if he received a fatal blow, as long as he had the black symbiote, he could heal him. But Nima, can the terrible corpse in front of you be saved? Regardless, try it first. The electric man avoided the fighting Malkis, Thor, and Iron Man Tony. Stark, and ran towards the black liquid that was crazily twisted on the ground in the distance. The electric light flickered, and Max appeared in front of the black symbiote instantly, but as Max approached, the black liquid was crazily distorted, as if he was afraid of electro-optical people. It seems that this thing is afraid of me. Max suddenly thought of the weakness of the black symbiote, he flew to Eddie's side, and took Eddie's body to the black symbiote. 
Boom boom boom. At this moment, countless dark elves rushed towards the electric man. I can't beat the big one, but you are far behind the small one. The electric man stretched out his hands, and a series of electric arcs rushed out, and the dark elves were pierced through their bodies. After Eddie's body appeared, the black symbiote immediately covered his body and became venom. Is it hopeless? Max said, looking at the venom that had become venom, but was still lying on the ground. Roar. Suddenly, venom opened his eyes and let out a roar. Thunder roared, a silver lightning fell from the sky and impacted on Malachus. With a big wave of its hand, the dark red energy rushed forward, sending Thor and Iron Man Tony. Stark out together. Advertisement. Since you have such a powerful force, you should work harder. Thor got up from the ground embarrassedly. Malekith stretched out one hand, and the power of the ether gathered in his hand and rushed towards Thor. Thor was not afraid, he shouted to increase his anger value, and the magic hammer Mernir flickered and smashed towards the impact of the etheric power. Boom. A deafening sound rang out, and the hammer, Milniel, let go, and the etheric force bombarded Thor's chest, sending Thor flying away. Take it to death, Asgard, no one can stop me. Malkis walked towards Thor with the power of the ether wrapped around his body. He stretched out his hand, and the power of the ether whirled frantically on his arm and rushed towards Thor. At this time, a steel arm grabbed Makas's arm. You must die first, monster. Iron Man Tony punched Malekis on the head and shot an energy cannon in his chest, sending Malekis flying away. At this time, a black burly figure appeared in the air, Venom Eddy. Venom grinned and snarled, and folded his hands together, swelling into a huge hammer and slammed on Malekis' body. With a, bang, Malekis fell straight down hitting the ground fiercely, and suddenly the rubble splashed. Hissing. The electric light masterpiece, the sky thundered, and the silver lightning rushed down, hitting Max who was suspended in the air. Billion volts. The power of the thunder beast. Max let out a roar, his hand shone with dazzling light, and a bolt of thunder energy rushed down towards Malekis. Rumble. There was a thunderous roar, and the terrifying thunder power of the energy column roared like a roar of a thunder beast, and it hit Makas' body with a bang. In an instant, Flying sand and rocks, a terrifying wind pressure swept all around. A huge crater with a radius of tens of meters appeared centered on the striking point of the thunder energy pillar. Advertisement. Did you beat it? Venom Eddie asked. It's not that simple, the power of the ether is far beyond your imagination. Thor walked to the edge of the huge pit. He looked at Max, the electric light man, and said, Also, your name is too ugly. Next time it is called Thor's power, you know. Okay, I will name it after you next time. Diangguang Ren laughed. The Asgard knows the power of the ether very well. He knows that you can't defeat me. Suddenly, dark red energy surged in the air, and Malekis floated. Thor stepped forward, and the hammer Mjolnir threw it directly at Malekis. Clang. Mars splashes. Malekith slammed his fist and smashed the hammer Mjolnir away. Iron Man flew up into the sky, shooting out energy cannons in his palm, and the miniature missiles on his shoulders shot towards Malekis. Boom boom boom. There was a roar, and the power of the ether surged. Maleki stepped step by step, and instantly came to Iron Man Tony. Tony. Stark was shocked, and subconsciously punched Malkis, but was pinched by the neck. Weak mortal body. Maleki slammed Tony to the ground, squeezing Tony's head. The etheric power surged, and the steel battle suit on Tony's body began to disintegrate and fell to the ground. Dot dot dot. Chapter 175 Chapter 171 Only he can save the world. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Do you know who I am? Tony. Stark stared sharply at Malekis and said. I'm. Iron Man. Tony grabbed Makas's arm, and saw Tony's arm starting to burn red, like Luo Tai. Malekis was a little surprised. He slept in the dark for too long, so many strange lives have been born in the light world. When Malkis was thinking, Tony punched it in the head. Malekis was a little angry, and the etheric power wrapped around his arm instantly penetrated Tony's body. Oh. Tony spouted blood, but the blood was red-hot lava. Twisted and weak life. Malekis threw the dying Tony aside. Ah. At this time, Thor's roar sounded, and a thunder fell from the sky, bombarding Malekis' body, and the hammer Mernir rushed over and knocked Malekis away. Are you all right, Tony? Thor hurried to Tony's side. Fortunately, my body can repair itself, but the injury is too serious and it will take some time. In the process, you can only fight by yourself. Tony spouted blood again. Don't worry. This guy is handed over to me. Thor shook the hammer of Merneil and rushed towards Malekis. With the dark red energy surging, Malekis grabbed Thor who was flying in the air, and slammed the ground fiercely. With a, bang, the ground cracked. Thor clenched the hammer tightly and slammed it on Malekis' head, but was slapped backhand by it, and the hammer flew out. Asgard, 
you can't see the world sinking into darkness. Malekith threw Thor into the air, and the power of the ether rushed towards him, piercing Thor's body in an instant. Hiss. The masterpiece of the electric light, Max turned into a thunder and lightning, and hit Malkis, and the two flew out. Boom. The power of the ether formed a scarlet tornado in the air. Malekis floated in the air, and it grabbed Max. Max was startled, and his body immediately quantized, turning into a bolt of lightning and fleeing into the distance. Advertisement. At this time, the power of the ether followed Max closely, wrapping him up, and Maxton appeared. Malekis grasped the fist in his hand, and suddenly, the etheric power was crazily compressed, squeezing Max's figure into shapeshifting, and the electric light on his body was much dim. Roar. In the distance, the venom rushed forward, leapt suddenly, and leapt towards Malekis. Malekis gave a backhand punch, and the power of the ether bombarded the venom, sending the venom away. Max fell to the ground, his body trembling, and his electric light dimmed a lot. The power of the ether is really hard to defeat. Thor climbed up to Tony's side, his body was also covered with blood, and the power of the ether penetrated his body. If it wasn't for his divine body to be tough enough, I'm afraid he has already died. If anyone else can stop this disaster, it's him, Thor said, and Tony naturally knew who he was. But he fell into another space, Tony said. Levy must be found, otherwise no one can stop Malekis. Thor waved, and the hammer, Milniel, returned to his hand. Leave it to me. At this moment, a voice sounded behind the two of them. Thor and Tony turned their heads and saw a scarlet whirlpool appeared behind them, and a guy in a red cloak walked out of the whirlpool. I'm going to look for Li Wei in the Nine Countries, you delay the Dark Elf. The person who came was Doctor Strange. I hope it's still too late. Stephen's face was a little heavy, and he walked into the portal behind him. Who is this magician? Thor asked. I don't know, Tony said. Anyway, since he said so, then I will try my best to stop Malekis. Thor rushed towards Malekis with lightning. Thor once again fought with the dark elf Malkis, the space fluctuated, and the two instantly fell into other worlds. Advertisement. Ah, Thor roared, and a bolt of lightning rushed toward Malekis. Dot 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 dot. Alfheim. The country of elves. To find a way to get Li Wei back to the earth, all the knowledgeable elders shook their heads helplessly. In the hall of the elf queen, there are only the elf queen, the elf girl, and Li Wei. Li, I don't know if you have a partner. The elf queen asked. Hearing this, the elf girl's ears stood up, and finally heard the message that made her happy. No. Li Wei shook his head. He looked at the elf queen, now his brows were burning, and the world was about to be destroyed, how could she still care about her private affairs? Does the elf queen have a crush on herself? This is possible, after all, he is considered an idol group. Oh, that's Li, my daughter. The elf queen looked at her daughter, and the girl's face suddenly became ruddy. Queen. Good news. At this time, an elder elder quickly walked into the hall and said, the sky is abnormal, and the nine kingdoms have begun to overlap. At this time, the gap in the sky may not be able to return to the earth, but it can also go to other places. World. Really. Li Weideng stood up suddenly and walked outside. Sure enough, in the sky, a circular karst cave appeared, and inside was the site of other worlds. Thank you for your hospitality, I am leaving. Li Wei turned to look at the elves. The elf queen looked at her daughter and sighed softly. Li Wei turned around and flew towards the sky. Advertisement. Through the cave in the sky, Li Wei came to a dark and silent world. Isn't this the dark world that Li Wei came to before? Li Wei turned around and flew into the sky cave. A biting cold wind is blowing, here is a world of ice and snow. Boom. At this moment, two figures appeared in the air. Li Wei saw clearly at a glance, it was Thor and the dark elf Malkis. Ah, Thor roared, fighting with Malekis in the air. Tor, I'm here, Li Wei happily shouted, and he stepped out. Suddenly, the space fluctuated and Li Wei disappeared. F.K. Li Wei looked down, it was the virgin forest, and he was back in the country of elves. Li Wei turned his head and flew into the cave. This time, it was no longer a dark world, but a world of flames and magma. The temperature in the air is extremely hot, the earth is tumbling with flames, and hot lava rises into the sky. Who is it? Dare to break into my realm. A throne stood in the magma. Above the throne, a figure composed of flames and magma appeared. Who are you? Li Wei raised his head and looked at the mysterious flame creature. I am a flame giant Serta. The flame man stared at Li Wei with a pair of burning holes. Suddenly, Li Wei felt as if his body was burning. Serta. Li Wei was impressed. Isn't this guy the flame giant that destroyed Asgard in Thor 3? Dot dot dot. Chapter 176 Chapter 172. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Flame Giant Serta, this guy is also a ruthless character. 
It is the oldest god that existed before the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the most powerful of the enemies of the gods. Legend has it that in the entire Asgard Protoss, only Thor has the power to fight him alone. Finally, Ragnarok is also dominated by Surta, which ends the story of the Nordic gods. It is so powerful that even Odin doesn't seem to know what method was used to imprison him. The heat on the body is not one-tenth of the scorching heat in Li Wei's heart. Every cell in his body is leaping for joy, roar, this opponent, will surely be able to make him fight a good fight. I know you, Flame Giant. Since we are here today, let us fight for a while. Li Wei looked at Flame Giant with a torch. Ha ha ha. The laughter resembling a thunderous roar came, and it was Flame Giant's ridicule. I am the king of the Flame Country, the enemy that the gods fear, who are you, dare to challenge me? Flame Giant smiled disdainfully. Then listen carefully. Li Wei said, I am the strongest person on earth. My fist can tear the sky and shatter the earth. Is this enough? People of the world, worms who are not qualified. Serta smiled disdainfully. It seems that we can't communicate well, so let's use our fists to communicate. Li Wei stepped out, and a spider web like crack appeared on the ground. Li, at this moment, a voice sounded from behind. Levy stopped. He turned his head to look. Dr. Strange Stephen Strange walked out of the Scarlet Vortex portal. Advertisement. What's wrong? Doctor. Li Wei asked. The world is in a crisis of destruction, and they need you. Stephen said. Li Wei turned to look at Flame Giant, the responsibility of saving the world overwhelmed the desire to fight. Next time we will fight this battle, Flame Giant. If you still have this attitude next time, maybe you can't wait for Ragnarok. Li Wei stepped out, and a crack appeared on the ground. The crack spread quickly and magma spurted out. Boom. Looking down from the flame world, I saw dense cracks appearing in this magma world. Dot 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 dot. London, Greenwich. At the moment, the battle between Thor and Malkis was coming to an end, Thor was lying miserably on the ground, and the hammer Mernir fell on the other side. Asgard, you should thank me. I will leave you a sigh of relief and let you see the universe after it has been terminated. Malekis raised his hands, and the power of the ether surrounded him, and began to spin frantically, forming a scarlet hurricane. The scope of the hurricane became wider and wider. Finally, it covered the sky and the sky was dyed red. I have been waiting for this day for a long time, and the universe will plunge into darkness again. Malachis' body began to levitate. You will never see that day. At this time, a voice sounded. If you want to ask why, because, I'm here. Advertisement. Thor Tulton was overjoyed when he turned his head and saw a scarlet vortex appeared, and Levy and Doctor Strange walked out of the vortex. Are you all okay? Li Wei looked at Thor Thor, Iron Man Tony, Stark, Electro Optical Max, and Venom Eddie who had been defeated and seriously injured one by one. Fortunately, if you come a few minutes later, the world will be destroyed. Thor said. It's okay, I calculated it, and it will definitely come at the last minute. Li Wei said, you know, the protagonist always comes out at the last minute. Have you really calculated it? B, definitely. Levi walked to Malekis. Midgard Earth Man, do you think you can stop me? Malekis in the Scarlet Vortex was condescending and looked at Li Wei contemptuously. Above Malekis, the nine worlds are already connected. At this moment, the power of the ether invades other worlds, and it will undoubtedly be the strongest moment, and the power of the ether will be infinitely magnified. Definitely, Li Wei said seriously, without hesitation. Turn into nothingness under the power of the ether. Malekis waved his hand, as if crushing a bug at will. The dark red energy of the ether rushed towards Li Wei and hit Li Wei fiercely. Boom boom boom. The ground cracked, and Li Wei's body was instantly swallowed by this terrifying etheric power. Unbearable. Malekis smiled mockingly, but his smile stopped abruptly the next moment. The power of the ether dissipated, and the Midgard stood on the ground unscathed. It's impossible. Malekis couldn't believe what he saw. It's boring. To this extent, this is not the power of the ether in the legend. Li Wei opened his mouth and yawned. Advertisement. It looks like I have to kill you first to destroy this universe. Malekis finally began to face Levi, a scarlet light burst from its pupils, and a large amount of etheric energy wrapped around its arms, turning into an energy ray impacted towards Li Wei. Boom. Suddenly, Li Wei's body shattered instantly under the blow of the terrifying etheric energy, the ground exploded, and a dust storm swept out towards the surroundings. But, it's just an afterimage. Obviously, Malekis also discovered this. Its eye pupils shrank violently, and the figure in front of it shook, and the Midgard had appeared in front of it. Li Wei's face was expressionless, and the red fist struck straight towards Malekis. Boom. The fist hit the door of Malekis, only a, click, was heard. Several cracks appeared on Malekis's face, and a pair of scarlet pupils exploded directly, turning the whole person into a black line. 
falling down towards the bottom. Boom. There was a boom, and the rubble splashed. A deep pit with a diameter of several tens of meters appeared on the ground, and a blast of wind pressure hit the surroundings, and the surrounding building glass was shattered one after another. In the deep pit, the dark red energy surged, and Malachi's figure floated. At this moment, it could no longer look directly, its face was disfigured, and its eyes were hollow and bloody. Kacha, Kacha, a faint voice came from Malachus's body, and dense cracks began to appear in its body, and etheric power flowed through these cracks. It turns out that this is the true power of the ether. Maleki snarled up to the sky, and its bloody eyes and mouth shot out scarlet light. Ah, Maleki's let out a roar, a terrifying force burst out of its body, and a wave of wind pressure swept out toward the surroundings, and the surrounding buildings collapsed within a few hundred meters. Was raised to the ground by this terrifying wind pressure. Suddenly, Makasa's figure turned into a scarlet mist and disappeared. Li Wei's pupils burst into light, and he cheered up, and now he finally started to be interesting. Chapter 177 Chapter 173 Seriously Punch Close Black Lens Bracket Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement Li Wei turned around abruptly and reached out to hold Makasa's fist in a thunderous manner. Ah, Malekis roared like a beast, a dark red energy jetted out from its mouth, bombarding Levy's chest. Boom boom boom, the ground began to crack, and the terrifying pressure caused Li Wei's calf to penetrate into the surface. Go to hell, Midgard. Malekis disappeared and appeared in the sky far away. Terrible etheric power burst out of its body, and then gathered in its hands from once again to form a huge amounts of scarlet energy ball, and then throw it towards Li Wei. Boom. The energy ball made a thunderous and deafening sound, and rushed towards Li Wei with the power of destroying the world. Li Wei retreated half a step and arched, his eyes were like torches, and he clenched his fists to gain momentum. Must kill series. Seriously punch. A loud roar. Fists blasted out. Boom. A deafening roar resounded through the sky, and the dark red energy ball formed by the etheric force collapsed under the mighty power of a punch, and a terrifying wind pressure swept all around. Malekith's pupils contracted, and there was an unbelievable look of fear, and the fierce fist wind bombarded its body. In an instant, its body suddenly exploded and disappeared. There is no cloud in the sky, and all the clouds are dispersed by the wind pressure. Li Wei looked into the distance, and a dark red light fell from the sky. Li Weifei walked over, and Thai particles, liquid Thai particles surging in the air. Li Wei strode forward and grabbed Thai particles. Suddenly, a terrifying force invaded Li Wei's body. Advertisement. Ah, Li Wei let out a low roar, a scarlet light burst out of his eyes and mouth. Li, put down Thai particles, this thing is very dangerous, it will destroy you. At this time, Thor and Doctor Strange approached Li Wei, and they were pushed back step by step by the terrifying wind pressure. Suddenly violent wind around, flying sand and rocks. Suddenly, the wind pressure disappeared. Sure enough, it's a very dangerous thing. Li Wei looked at the two men sharply, Thai particles wrapped around his arm. Doctor Strange stepped forward quickly, and a delicate box appeared in his hand, putting Thai particles into the box. Li, are you okay? Thor stepped forward, and he squeezed the muscles in Levy's arm. It is amazing how he can resist the power of Thai particles. What can I do? Li Wei smiled, a faint scarlet light still remained in his eyes. The power of the ether is indeed terrifying. At the moment he came into contact with Thai particles, this terrifying force seemed to destroy him. Every inch of his body was violently attacked by the power of the ether, but it still lost and it could not destroy Li Wei. Li, you saved the world again. Thor said, but why do I always feel that the protagonist should be me? Isn't the great Thor the protagonist in every legendary story? Well, then you won't ask me for help next time. Li Wei turned and left. It's just a joke. Torhaha laughed and caught up with Li Wei. When he came to the Dark Elf spaceship, Li Wei waved his hand and put this huge amounts of sword-shaped spaceship into the space. Later, Li Wei returned to Rainbow Island with Max, the Electro-Optical Man, and Eddie the Venom. Thor returned to Asgard with Thai Particles. Dot 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 dot. Rainbow Island. Advertisement. The weather is clear and cloudless. Although the weather was a bit hot, it was gradually cooled by the wind here. After a series of battles, it seems that nothing has happened recently, and everyone can relax for a while. On the soft beach, the sea breeze is blowing in, and Li Wei and the others are holding a beach party. There was a burst of playful laughter. Li Wei ran awkwardly on the beach. Cindy and Gwen were behind him. The two shot at Li Wei with water guns, and Li Wei counterattacked without showing weakness. The two of them never seemed to be able to catch up with Li Wei, until they were too exhausted, and when they couldn't run, they sat on the beach and played. They dug a hole in the beach and the sea slowly flowed in. Li Wei sat on the pavilion in front of the log cabin next to him, 
facing the sea, letting the sea breeze blow, enjoying the sun bathing. Not far away, Peter had a beach volleyball match on the beach. Dot 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 dot. The next day, Osborne Building, Levy took Peter Parker and the other three members of the Spider Team, Gwen, Cindy, and Black Spider-Man Miles into the Osborne Weapon Lab. Lee, what happened? Peter asked. It's true, but it's a good thing. Lee Wei said. Five people walked into the laboratory, and Harry greeted him. Has it been developed? Li Wei asked. Definitely, even I am jealous of the effect. Harry said. Hearing Harry say so, Peter and the four were even more in the cloud, and they didn't know what the hell were doing. Advertisement. As Harry led a few people into the weapon room, everyone came to the four glass covers and saw what was in the glass covers. Peter knew why. In the glass cover, there are four sets of spider battlesuit. The first set of these four spider battlesuits is mainly red, and the battlesuit has obvious steel lines. The second set is mainly white, also full of steel, obviously designed for Gwen. The third and fourth sets of spider battlesuits are mainly black and have different styles. The fourth set does not use the same headgear as the first three sets, but uses a mask. Cindy could tell at a glance that the fourth spider battlesuit should be designed for her, because her spider battlesuit does not have a headgear. She felt too boring, so she used a red silk scarf to cover her face. Everyone, let our chief designer introduce you these four powerful steel spider battlesuits. Li Wei said. Steel spider battlesuit. Just when the four Peter were puzzled, a scientific researcher came out. Yes, according to the requirements of the boss, we have developed these four steel spider battlesuits. The R&D staff projected a video in the air, and an animated version of Spider-Man appeared in the video, with the function introduction of the steel spider battlesuit on it. First of all, the logo on the chest of the spider steel battlesuit is no longer an ornament. It contains a small drone with a tracking function that can track the enemy's whereabouts unconsciously. The R&D staff pointed to the video and continued, it uses the latest anti-reconnaissance system. At present, systems such as surveillance radars in most countries in the world can't capture the spider drone at all. Wow, that's cool. Miles was as surprised as a country boy, he was different from a genius like Peter. Peter looked at the introduction next to him, and then took another look at the design of the spider drone. He could probably analyze the technology. Dot dot dot. Chapter 178 Chapter 174 Spider Steel Battle Suit Close Black Lens Bracket Previous Chapter Next Chapter Advertisement The second function is a GPS tracking and positioning system, and an alarm system is also added. If the Spider-Man is in danger, Activate the alarm function, our system will receive it as soon as possible, and then locate the location of the Spider-Man to support the Spider-Man. The R&D staff turned to the next short video introduction, he said, the third function is the upgraded wrist transmitter. The newly upgraded wrist transmitter contains 576 combinations of spider webs to choose from. It can even launch holograms, cobwebs, and charged aggressive cobwebs. The fourth function, spider web-like hang gliding wing. The R&D staff pointed to the video and the animation Spider-Man in the video could be seen unfolding the hang gliding wing and glide freely. I like this function, Peter said. The fifth function, boss lets you add emotional eyes. R&D staff said. Spider-Man's eyepieces can be changed according to different modes, switching between emotional modes, so that Spider-Man has, eyes. In the video, Spider-Man's eyes are sometimes wide and sometimes cute, making Spider-Man more visible. People love. So cute. Gwen's eyes twinkled with stars. Fifth. One click is automatically close to the body. Sixth, the augmented reality system. Spider-Man can select different combat modes through the AR function of the eyepieces to understand the detailed information and specific conditions of the environment, so that he can use more suitable tactics to fight. Even this AR system supports downloading games, whether it is training or playing games, the degree of reality is equivalent to letting Spider-Man enter another, other world. Awesome. Meyerston applauded, seeing everyone looking at him, he explained, I mean this training function. 7th, Voice Artificial Functional Assistant. Spider-Man's Spider Intelligent Assistant can think independently, will help Spider-Man process various things and calculate various information. Advertisement. With Spider Assistant, Spider-Man doesn't even need a mobile phone. You can choose what combat mode to use, search for geographic locations, and even perform facial recognition for criminals. You only need to send a voice signal to Assistant Spider. The Spider Assistant uses the most advanced intelligent system in the world. In addition to being a Work partner, the spider assistant can also chat with the Spider-Man. In addition, we also added humor to the spider assistant. The R&D staff smiled. He continued. The last function is still under development. This function involves nanotechnology. Our idea is to add eight spider tentacles to the back of the Spider-Man, which is controlled by the artificial intelligence spider assistant. 
Even if the Spider-Man is fighting, the spider tentacles can automatically attack or protect the Spider-Man. Because it is nanotechnology, it does not need to take up any space, and it is still under development. Finally, do you need to try its function? Said the developer. Definitely, it's so cool, I want to try it. Miles can't wait, his main thing is to try the function of the spider eyepiece game, he will not say definitely for this purpose. Li Wei and Harry walked aside, and he whispered, does this developer believe it? The identity of the Spider-Man can't be revealed. Don't worry, I have my own means of keeping secrets. And he has been in the company for almost his entire life, and he has stayed in Osborne when my father was. You can trust it, Harry said. I'm relieved. Li Wei nodded. As the leader of a large group, Harry had his own means. Li Wei was just a reminder when he talked about it. In front of the Osborne group, Li Wei and Peter walked out of the building. All four of Peter carried a small suitcase, which contained a steel spider battlesuit. When they came to the Osborne group, the four were full of doubts, and when they left Osborne, the four were very satisfied. The emergence of the spider steel battlesuit undoubtedly gave them better tactics to deal with high-tech enemies, and the improvement of their strength is huge amounts of advertisement. Dot 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 dot. Above the sea, a figure swiftly flew parallel to the sea surface, and following his flight, the sea surface was drawn into a ravine. On the sea in the distance, an oil rig was burning with a raging fire, and thick smoke rose into the sky. Soon, Li Wei came to this oil drilling platform. He flew around, and there was a raging fire everywhere. There is not much oxygen left. The entrance and exit were also completely blocked by the collapsed machine. I don't know how long we can last. At this time, the voice of speaking passed into Li Wei's ears. He rushed into the sea of flames, grabbed the huge amounts of steel equipment with one hand, and threw it directly into the sea. When he came to the locked door, Li Wei pulled the iron door away at once. He walked into the room, and there were a few trapped oil workers inside. The sudden appearance of Li Wei frightened several people, because he was accidentally stained with oil just now, and now he was full of flames. Fortunately, Li Wei's reputation was fairly high, and these oil workers recognized him and quickly calmed down. Come with me, everyone. Li Wei shook his head at them, and then walked out first. The road ahead of the few people has been completely sealed by the sea of fire. Li Wei slapped his palms together, and a violent wind pressure rushed out, and the sea of fire in front of him was directly extinguished by a fan. On the sea, a helicopter is hovering far away from the oil drilling platform. This is the rescuer number 63 to 666. The oil workers inside have been rescued. We will leave after the final confirmation. On the helicopter, the pilot was reporting to the rescue center. Wait, there are people on the tarmac. At this time, rescuers saw several oil workers appearing on the oil drilling platform. The helicopter flew down to pick up all the oil workers on the plane. At this time, huge amounts of oil tanks fell down. Advertisement. Hurry up. The rescuer shouted, and the helicopter quickly flew high into the sky. Li Weifei went on his body and hugged the huge amounts of oil tank, which burned with raging flames. Boom. Suddenly, the oil tank exploded. The terrifying wind pressure swept all around, blasting the helicopter that had flown away and almost fell into the ocean. Fortunately, the pilot was an old driver who had driven helicopters for decades, and began to levitate into the air after a sharp turn. Oh my god, is he okay? The crowd was startled. Roar looked at the figure that was being swallowed by the explosion. The flame dissipated, and the cloak flying in the air was printed in front of everyone's eyes. The guy turned his back to them, gave them a thumbs up, and then disappeared into the sea as a golden lightning. Under the sky, a golden lightning pierced the sky. Li Wei spins the flight in the sky, showing all kinds of tricks. Not long after, he has come to America. Suddenly, a powerful energy burst out suddenly attracted Li Wei's attention. Li Wei turned his head to look at the place where the energy burst, his whole person turned into a golden lightning and flew towards the target place. Dot dot dot. Chapter 179 Chapter 175 I heard your prayers, seeking subscription for monthly pass. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Los Angeles, California. In a deserted forest on the outskirts of the city. The strong wind roar howled, the trees were swaying in the strong wind, some shallow rooted trees were overturned by the sudden eruption of wind pressure, setting off waves of sand and rocks. In the forest, there is a huge six-pointed star on a hill. This six-pointed star is bursting out of a terrifying force, rising into the sky. In the squally wind, there were a few teenagers and girls panicking. Ah, several young girls desperately hugged the trees and let out a cry of piercing their eardrums. Nicole, your magic succeeded, but what are we going to do now, I'm about to be blown out. A 14 five-year-old boy shouted loudly. He hugged a tree. The thick tree shook violently in the wind, and the ground cracked. 
it seemed that the tree was about to be lifted out in the next moment. I don't know, nor did I expect that my magic would succeed. The one called Nicole was a 13 or 14 year old girl. She held a tree tightly with her hands and feet, and the wind was blowing on her cheeks, and she could no longer distinguish her original appearance. You speak louder, I can't hear you. The boy next to him shouted. I said, I can't help it. Nicole shouted aloud, and the boy next to her could barely hear her clearly. Roar. Suddenly, a deafening roar erupted from the six-pointed star, and a giant black shadow appeared in the energy. The wind stopped, the energy in the six-pointed star receded, and an extremely ugly monster appeared. The monster is nearly ten meters tall. Its skin is rough and gray. It stands on two legs, has four arms around its waist, sharp claws on its arms, and dense eyes on its shoulders. On the head, there are countless octopus-like tentacles. Advertisement. Nicole, can you control this monster? The boy asked. It doesn't seem to be possible. Nicole shook her head. Gert, how about you? The boy looked at the other girl again. The girl named Grid shook her head. Then let's run now. After speaking, several teenagers and girls ran away. At this moment, the monster behind them roared and chased them towards the teenagers and girls. Boom. With a leap, the giant monster appeared on the road in front of the few people, countless eyes on the shoulders turned, and huge amounts of paws were shot at the few people. Boom. With a loud bang, the trees fell over and gravel splashed. Several young girls were so scared that they turned around and ran away desperately. The monster jumped and appeared in front of several people. The head full of tentacles suddenly split open, revealing a mouth full of blood basins full of jagged teeth, and roared at several people, and a stench suddenly hit. Boom boom boom. Countless tentacles flogged at several teenagers and girls. Be careful. A young girl slammed into the young man, and shot an energy ray in her hand, cutting off the monster's tentacles. Thank you, Carolina. A white boy fell on the ground. Be careful, Carolina. At this time, the reminders of the friends sounded. The girl called Carolina turned her head, one of the monster's tentacles drew towards her. She wanted to resist, but it was too late. The tentacles flew her out, slammed her back on a tree, and squirted a mouthful from her small red mouth. Blood. Monster. Go away. The girl Nicole stepped forward, holding a magic wand in her hand. Magic arrows. The girl Nicole raised the magic wand in her hand, and a series of red magic arrows shot at the monster, but these magic arrows didn't seem to penetrate the monster's skin, and the monster's huge amounts of paws were shot at her. Careful. Careful. All the friends shouted, but Nicole couldn't react to the monster's sudden attack at all. Fear was occupying her brain, but she didn't want to die. Advertisement. Nicole raised his magic wand and attacked the monster. A cloud of clouds enveloped her thin body, which was the huge claws of the monster. Help me. Nicole's eyes shrank, and she let out a cry of fear. I heard your prayer. At this moment, a voice sounded over Nicole. Boom. Roars tearing air sounds rang out, and the monster's huge amounts of claws exploded and turned into flesh and blood to splash on the ground. Nicole looked at the stalwart figure floating in front of her in horror, the white cloak flying in the air. Next. She saw this figure with only one punch, and the huge body of the monster in front burst open, and flesh and blood splashed in the forest. It's okay. When a gentle voice rang in Nicole's ears, she came back to her senses. The mysterious person who rescued her had already arrived in front of her for some time. Because he had his back to the sun, Nicole couldn't see his face clearly, but only faintly saw an outline. With the gentle words of the mysterious person, Nicole felt her little heart throbbing and plopping, she thought, maybe it was love at first sight. It's okay. I'm okay. Nicole raised her head and murmured blankly. No matter what method you use to summon this monster, it is very dangerous, wild boys, now tell me where your home is, and I will send you back. Li Wei passed the girl and looked at the young girls behind her, two men and three women in total. Join the rescued girl, a total of six people. Do not, do not want, we don't want to go home. To Li Wei's surprise, the young girls in front of him said in unison. Listen to me, when I was rebellious, I understood your thoughts very well, but this thing you are playing is too dangerous, you can't play it anymore, you know. Li Wei said. Advertisement. No, you don't even know what happened. If you knew, you wouldn't say that. The white boy said. Oh, isn't it? It seems that there are twists and turns in this story, can you tell me? Li Wei suddenly turned into a psychological counselor for rebellious teenagers. We know you. The black boy looked at Li Wei in surprise. That's even simpler. Can you tell me what's going on? Li Wei said, and he let six young girls sit on the ground with himself in a circle. Li Wei looked at the girl next to him and said, let's introduce from me first. First of all, I, my name is Li, 18 years old this year, a hero, how about you? Ah, the girl who was called by Li Wei blushed, and she whispered, 
My name is Nicole Minoru and I am 14 years old. My name is Gert Yorks and I am 15 years old this year, said a fat girl next to Nicole. My name is Chaz Stein, the white boy said coolly. My name is Alex Wilde, the black boy said. My name is Carolina Dean and I am 15 years old this year. The next girl said. Molly Hernandez, 16 years old this year, said the last girl. Very good, so are we friends now. Li Wei looked at the rebellious teenagers. Yeah, the girl Nicole nodded like a little chicken. Then can you tell me what happened? Dot dot dot. Chapter 180 Chapter 176. Previous chapter. Next chapter. Advertisement. Next, six young girls describe their bizarre stories. Not to mention, Li Wei felt strange twists and turns after hearing it, and it could be written as a novel. These six young girls discovered that their parents were actually members of a certain cult, and they also witnessed the evil rituals in which their parents killed ordinary people for sacrifice. They called the police, but the police simply didn't believe them. After being discovered by their parents, the six people proposed to form a combination like a hero organization, and a rebellious teenage girl combination was established. They killed their relatives righteously and ran away from home, hoping to find a way to fight their parents. This rebellious organization, they named Lijatongmung. Alex Wilder, a black teenager, has a very high IQ, and is the leader of this teens, children away from home. The fat girl Getter Yorks has telepathy ability, and her mind can connect with a monster dinosaur. As for where this monster dinosaur came from, she didn't know. A 16-year-old girl, Molly Hernandez, possesses Superman's power and defense abilities. As for how strong she is, she doesn't know. The girl Carolina Dean can absorb solar energy and the mysterious energy in the universe, and can release these energy. Chaz Stein, a cool white teenager, is proficient in driving various machines, including high-tech vehicles such as flight machines. The 14-year-old girl Nicole Minoru, who was finally rescued by Li Wei, was discovered by Nicole because of her parents' secrets. Her parents tried to use this magic wand to subdue Nicole. Unexpectedly, Nicole's body absorbed the wand and became the owner of this staff. This allowed Nicole Minoru to escape and rescued five people one by one by the way. Currently Nicole Minoru knows about the ability of magic wands, including snow, freeze, smoke, teleport, earthquake, explosion, flight, water travel, dance, unlock, smash, psychic, charge, and cause blindness, through walls, etc. Advertisement. This magic wand is extremely powerful, as long as Nicole Minoru speaks the magic, the magic can take shape. In other words, Nicole Minoru only needs to say, snow, and it will snow around. Reality gem is better than reality gem, Li Wei naturally didn't believe it, and then after Nicole Minoru's face was ready to cast his magic, Li Wei was convinced. Don't worry, it's okay, if you want to ask why, because I'm here. Li Wei comforted a few people, and the following things were simple. Based on the relationship between Li Wei and S.H.I.E.L.D., he only needed to disclose the information of the cult organization to the Phil Coulson agent, and then when the cult organization was performing an evil sacrifice ceremony, it was swept away by the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, FBI agent, and CIA agent that suddenly broke in. After arriving in New York City, Li Wei invited the frightened teenagers and girls for a meal, and then he left. When leaving, Li Wei also told the girl Nicole Minoru his purpose. Nicole, are you interested in being a hero? Li Wei looked at the girl Nicole. Li Wei actually wanted to find a magician in the team a long time ago, because he hates these magicians and travels back and forth all day long, so he needs someone who can fight the magician to make up for the team's magic gap. The girl Nicole Minoru, although her ability is slightly weaker now, the potential she showed is undoubtedly huge amounts of. The other five companions looked at Nicole enviously, and they guessed what happened next. Li Wei recruited Nicole. I am recruiting you in the name of the president of the Heroes Association, and I invite you to join this great organization. Now, tell me your answer. Li Wei looked at Nicole. Under Li Wei's hot gaze, Nicole Minoru's cheeks flushed, and she nodded, I'll join. Very well, trust me, you will definitely become a great hero and magician in the future. Li Wei showed a fox smile, and finally finished. Advertisement. I want to join too. At this moment, the black teenager Alex Wilde raised his hand and said. Li Wei looked at the black boy embarrassedly. He said. Definitely, I just need you. New York City is being infiltrated by evil forces. You will be my eyes to observe these evils for me. Then give the message to Nicole, we discuss the countermeasures again. Remember, you must not act alone without my orders. Definitely, I promise to obey the orders. The black teenager Alex assured, patting his chest. Finally, Li Wei sent the six back to Los Angeles. Fortunately, these six people are all rich in their families. Although their parents were arrested, they quickly cheered up after being sad for a while. Rainbow Island. A figure flew, 
Naturally it was Li Wei. Behind Li Wei is the magical girl Nicole, who will also flight. Due to the recent leisure, most of the heroes of the Heroes Association are in the villas. Everyone, introduce to you our new team member, trainee hero Nicole. Li Wei announced to everyone, seeing the cute little lowly, everyone smiled kindly. Diang Wang Man showed a smile that was even more ugly than the devil, and was immediately hit by Li Wei and flew out. By the way, do you have a code name? The conventions in the hero world have code names. Li Wei looked at Xiao Nicole. Sister Green. The arrival of Nicole adds another member to the Gwen and Cindy alliances of the disadvantaged groups. Dot 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 dot. There are many tall buildings in the city. Between the buildings, two petite figures leapt flexibly. They occasionally screamed, and the robots flying in the air were knocked down by them. This robot is wearing a yellow tights, a white cloak, and a slippery bald head. The appearance is somewhat similar to Li Wei. Energy burst. Little Nicole yelled. A six-pointed star appeared on her magic wand, and an energy ray blasted out, exploding a robot. Advertisement. Yeah, Nicole flew to the top of the building and patted her little hand with Gwen happily. Li Wei 3 has been wiped out. Little Nicole said with joy. After coming to Rainbow Island for a month, little Nicole almost lives here except for going home occasionally. It's very interesting here. Everyone has super ability. She is not unusual. Sometimes someone will take her out to fight the gangs. Don't feel too exciting. Within a month, with the help of everyone, Nicole finally mastered the magic wand proficiently and became a member with combat ability. At this time, there was a sound of unusual movement behind him. The two turned around quickly, and a Levi robot had come close to them, with the number 5 written on their foreheads. Robot Leeway 5 waved his fists at the two of them. Although Xiao Nicole had raised the magic wand to bless them with energy shields, the violent fist wind still shook the two of them flying, and the building not far away was also affected by this. The terrifying wind punched a big hole. Ock. Failure. At this moment, a voice rang in the ears of little Nicole and Gwen. If it's an enemy, you might be dead. Cobweb Cindy walked out, beside her, Peter and Lee Wei eating an apple. As soon as the voice fell, the tall buildings disappeared, and everyone appeared in the training room. This is just training, I didn't take it seriously. Gwen said with a small mouth, while little Nicole spit out her little tongue cutely. Dot dot dot. 